When Super Mario Bros. Wonder was released last year, it was very exciting. After all, it's the first mainline 2D Super Mario game there's been since 2012. I mean, 2019. No, that doesn't count, that's really 2013, which isn't that different from 2012, or really 2009, and maybe it's really 2006. Unless it's 2016. Uh, 2015? Wait, no, because then it would be 2019 again. The first one since 1992. Since 1992. I mean, 1995. Or maybe 2007? Bafflingly, I've even seen some people say 2017, but they probably just misunderstood the question. Wait, actually, I'm Jan Misely, and how many Super Mario games are there now? Super Massive Galaxy, $30 NES release, Tail Tree, Coin World are new, but they're the same. New Super Luigi, new Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games. Skip, Squeak, Block, Stepper, Pinkle, Peach, Treasure Tracker, Rhythm, Heaven, Mega Mix, Baby Metal, Sound Frog. How do we know what's name line? Everything is senseless, cause there's no consensus. How do we know what's name line? If Super's in the title, we think um, I should get this out of the way now because I know people will be annoying about it in the comments like they were last time. Yes, I'm saying it like bros. That's not a mistake. It's how I'm choosing to say it. Of the two common ways people pronounce the B-R-O-S period in the titles of these games, it's the pronunciation I think makes more sense. I'm aware that the official way to say it is the Super Mario Brothers Wonder Game for the Nintendo Switch system but I just don't want to say it like that. Anyway, this is the second mainline video in the How Many Super Mario Games Are There series, but it's the third, fourth, or fifth of these videos overall, depending on how you count it. The first installment, How Many Super Mario Games Are There, was a video all about how there isn't any clear consensus about what games are part of the mainline Super Mario series. And that's fascinating, I think. This is a very popular series of games, but there is no general agreement about what games are actually part of it. For that video, I made a survey asking people to classify a set of 54 different Mario games. For each one, I simply asked, yes or no, is this game part of the Super Mario series. Explaining that by the Super Mario series, I mean the mainline Mario games, the series that includes Super Mario Bros. for the NES and all of its sequels. And just to be as clear as possible, that is how I'll be using the term Super Mario game throughout this video. It would be more precise to say entry in the mainline Super Mario series, but that's too many words to say every time. As I'll get into later, this is not merely a question of what games are branded as Super Mario. There are a lot of games with Super Mario branding, which people generally agree are definitely not part of the Super Mario series. Although the generally in that statement is doing a lot of work. After all, in that survey, there were only three games that over 95% of people called part of the series. Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 3, and Super Mario World. In the video, I went over a bunch of other games and talked about why they might be included or excluded from someone's analysis of the series. So, between when I made that video and now, a game called Super Mario Bros Wonder was released for the Switch. And very excitingly, absolutely none of the reasons I went over for why people might call various other Mario games not part of the mainline Super Mario series apply to this game. So the question is, is Mario Wonder the first Mario Mario game that's unambiguously not a spin-off since Super Mario World? Naturally, I gotta make a new survey and find out. And spoilers, yeah, it is. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is the most unambiguous entry in the mainline Super Mario series since Super Mario World. There is finally a fourth game that almost everyone can agree is a Super Mario game. But the thing is, while the results of that original survey were very informative, I had failed to anticipate just how wide the range of different ways people classify these games actually is. 54 games was clearly not enough, and yes or no was clearly not enough options for each game. So, in October 2023, when Super Mario Bros. Wonder came out, I released a new updated version of the survey. Instead of just a single checkbox, each game was given two separate questions, one asking the survey participant to place the game into one of a few specific categories, and another question asking if the game is a distinct entry in the Super Mario series. I also included an unsure option for all the questions, so respondents wouldn't need to pick an arbitrary response in cases where they either didn't know the game well enough to pick an answer, or didn't think any of the provided categories were sufficient. You might think that this same thing could be achieved by allowing people to skip questions, but in my experience making polls and surveys, it is very hard to set up a question in a way where it's obvious that if you don't have an answer, you're supposed to skip it. Like, every time I've made a survey that has a question with a text box that says it's optional, without fail, several people always type NA or something like that instead of leaving the text box empty. So by allowing people to say unsure for questions they're unsure of, I provide a way for people to indicate that they don't have an answer to the question without it feeling like they're not participating. And of course, this didn't completely work. A lot of people still felt like they had to give a firm stance on every single game, and told me directly that they didn't want to say unsure for all the ones they were unsure of. However, I also provided links to Super Mario Wiki articles about every game, so people taking the survey could quickly research games they were unfamiliar with, if they wanted to. The idea was that these differences in structure would allow for the responses to the survey to be much more nuanced than the original version. The other main difference was in the size of the survey. Instead of 54 games, I asked survey respondents to classify 58 games, and another 300 after that. It was 358 games, which I know 
though, is a lot. While it still wasn't comprehensive, the Mario franchise is absolutely colossal, it was much closer to being comprehensive than the original survey was. In the original survey, I included a little text box for people to list games that they considered to be part of the series, but that I hadn't explicitly mentioned. And as I discussed briefly in the original video, the games people would choose to bring up, unprompted as being part of this series, included games from all across the Mario franchise, from the Mario Kart games to the RPGs to the edutainment games. And that made me curious. If some people would list these games as part of the series unprompted, how many people would include them if I asked about them directly? And that's why I included so many games in the new survey. This had the pretty significant side effect of making the survey take a really long time to complete, which is why there was such a significant gap between when I released the new survey and when I'm actually making this video. I couldn't seriously analyze the data I was collecting until I had enough of it for the results to be meaningful. Ideally, more people than had responded to the original survey. And understandably, the scope of the new survey meant a lot of people gave up partway through, and that a lot of other people just ended up taking a really, really long time to complete it. This increase in complexity created some very significant biases for the data, which I'll talk about later. The super short version is that you should take all the statistics I'll be referencing for the rest of this video with a grain of salt, because they're not necessarily reflective of the general population. These are exclusively results from people who are willing and able to put aside a few hours to classify a couple hundred Mario games. That said, the results were very interesting, and provided me with some great insights into how people classify a bunch of the weird edge cases, which is exactly what I wanted. It was also great reading through different people's in-depth explanations of the reasoning behind their responses. People gave the specific definitions they were trying to stick to, justifications for some of the stranger choices they would make, updates on their emotional states over the course of the hours they spent taking the survey, one person wrote a whole parody of We Didn't Start the Fire, it's great stuff. Anyway, before I get too deep into the weeds here, it's worth taking some time to ask why this is even a question in the first place. How could there possibly be enough stuff to talk about that wasn't already covered in part one to justify this video's existence? First of all, what do I even mean by the mainline Super Mario series? In my first video about this subject, I made a distinction between Mario games and Super Mario games, where Mario games are games that are part of the Mario franchise as a whole, and Super Mario games are one specific series within that franchise. At the time, this was how the Super Mario wiki used these two terms, and since then, the Super Mario wiki has stopped doing this. Currently, the wiki uses Super Mario for both the franchise and the series within it. I respect this choice, it is consistent with how Nintendo seems to use the name Super Mario, however, this this makes the key distinction I'm focusing on here a lot harder to talk about. After all, it sounds really silly to suggest that some Super Mario games, games in the Super Mario franchise, are not Super Mario games, games in the Super Mario series. But just from a linguistic perspective, if you look at the way people use the term, it's really normal for people to say something like every Super Mario game or every Mario game when they're really talking about a small subset of the games in the Super Mario franchise. Like if you look on YouTube for examples of blank in every Super Super Mario game, like the first level of every Super Mario game, or the final boss of every Super Mario game, or speedrun marathon of every Super Mario game. While you do occasionally find a video that's actually trying to be a comprehensive documentation of the entire franchise, most of the time these videos are using Super Mario game to refer to games in one specific series, the series of games that include Super Mario Bros. and its sequels. And yet, there is no consensus at all for which games actually are part of this series. In fact, let's take a quick look at some of these videos and compare which games Games they include. In 2020, speedrunner Cosmic tried the Mainline Mario Marathon, where he speedran every mainline Super Mario game in under 24 hours. His itinerary for the marathon consisted of these 18 games, which should look pretty familiar to those of you who've seen my previous video about this subject. Worth noting, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe for the Switch is included here and not New Super Mario Bros. U for the Wii U, which I'm pretty sure is just because Cosmic considers these two titles to be the same game and the Switch version is better for speedrunning. The same list in a slightly different form is also used for Copycat's video, The Worst Glitches in Every Super Mario Game, from later that same year. Copycat lists these games in something that resembles but isn't exactly the same as their international release order, and uses an interesting convention for referring to the four new Super Mario Bros. games. Which was New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo DS. New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Wii. New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS. New Super Mario Bros. for the Nintendo Wii U. Uh, one fun one is this 2018 video by musician Family Jewels, titled The Super Mario Super Medley, a collaborative musical tribute to the history of Mario Family Jewels. This collaborative medley includes music from the same 18 games listed by those other two videos, including a couple games that straight up don't have any original music. Like, sure, you can tell me that's Jack's Films doing a piano rendition of the ending theme from Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, but I know that's really an extended version of the ending theme from Mario 1 that was used in the arcade game versus Super Mario Bros. first. 
You can't trick me, team of 70 musicians. Anyway, yeah, in addition to these 18 games, this video also includes New Super Luigi U, which is a fun choice. In the 2023 video, How Fast Can You Touch a Koopa in Every Mario Game, YouTuber Jorts extends the familiar list without New Super Luigi U to include Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which had recently been released at the time this video was posted, as well as Bowser's Fury, the new side game included in the Switch port of Super Mario 3D World. Earlier that same year, the channel Switch Stop posted a ranking of every mainline Mario game, which includes the same games as Jorts' video, but excluding wonder as that game hadn't been released yet at the time. However, very interestingly, this video also contains an explanation of what games are included in the ranking, and this explanation indicates that the writers for Switch Stop consider the games ranked in this video to be a subset of the Super Mario series. Like, the first requirement they give for a game's inclusion in the ranking is that it has to be part of the Super Mario series, but like, they keep saying things after that. Super Mario Run and the Maker games aren't excluded for not being part of the series, but because it didn't make sense to include them in this specific video. So yeah, that's fun. Anyway, there's this video by Jeremy Clinger called Ranking How Useless Peach Is in Every Mario Game, with a thumbnail that seems to suggest that Jeremy here considers the 2023 animated Mario movie to count as a Mario game. Uh, the actual video doesn't include it, though. Jeremy actually goes out of his way to mention every game he considers mainline, including games that don't even have Peach in them. Thanks, Jeremy. The main highlights of this particular list are Yoshi's Island, Super Mario Run, and Super Mario 64 DS. Since he mentions 64 DS but none of the other remakes, I kinda have to assume that this guy considers this specific remake to count as its own distinct entry in the series. Neat. On the subject, subject of lists that include some but not all remakes, this video by Boss Runner called Evolution of Final Bosses in Super Mario Games 1985 to 2024, posted shortly after Super Mario Bros. Wonder was released, has clips of the final bosses in 24 Mario games, including Super Mario Run, some but not all remakes of previous Super Mario games, and Super Mario Maker 2, but neither of the other Maker games. Of course, if you're looking for a list that includes Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS, you'll have to watch Game Maker's Toolkit's video, Super Mario's Invisible Difficulty Settings, wherein creator Mark Brown refers to this impressive stack of game boxes and cartridges says, quote, every single mainline entry in the Super Mario Brothers series. And seriously, my compliments to Mark for actually having the guts to include Maker for 3DS here. I don't know if that's because he genuinely considers it to be a proper entry in the series or as a re-release of the first Mario Maker because, once again, his collection includes some, but not all remakes. Anyway, in the actual video outside this one shot, while he doesn't, like, say his list of games out loud at any point, he does seem to count Yoshi's Island as part of the series, which is always fun to see. There's also a very brief clip from Donkey Kong, which I don't think is meant to be an example of the game in the series, but who knows? You know what does include Donkey Kong as a game in the series is this 2016 video by IGN, which is a fully immersive VR experience of watching NES Mario hit blocks to display a timeline of Super Mario releases along the completely flat walls of the big cube. This timeline also includes the arcade game Mario Bros, Yoshi's Island, Maker and Wario Land, but with the wrong number in its subtitle. Oops. Okay, one more. In 2022, VTuber Dollop Days did a 10-hour marathon stream with some friends commentating where she played through the Mario series, skipping to the next game whenever she died. And the final set of games she ended up playing for that stream is fascinating. Not playing Super Paper Mario? I mean, like, that's... I would I would love to, but I think that needs its own stream. Does this count as a mainline Mario game? I think so. Yes, I watched the entire 10 hour stream while taking notes explicitly so I could figure out how one of my favorite streamers conceptualizes the Super Mario series. It was absolutely worth it. Now, this isn't necessarily representative of what games Dollop considers mainline. She does explicitly say in the stream that she's skipping games that she doesn't have means of playing and that she doesn't consider Super Mario Kart to really be part of the series. Should we have a moment of levity and play some Super Mario Kart? This is not a mainline game. I know it's it's not, It's this isn't canon. This is just, this is levity. But she definitely considers Yoshi's Island to be mainline and possibly also Donkey Kong, it's unclear. Wait a minute, it is the original Donkey Kong? Is the original Donkey Kong on here? Because I want to play that one. That's a Mario game. Oh, this is a separate timeline though, so it doesn't matter that it's out of order. Oh, and while Days never lists all the games she considers mainline but isn't playing, she does specifically mention Bowser's Fury and Maker 2 as games she would have played if she owned them. She also sets up her Wii U with the intention of playing 3D World but then can't find her copy, and then tries to play Super Mario Maker instead and can't get the game to work. It's very sad. So what point am I trying to make here? I'm not trying to, like, call any of these people out for disagreeing with each other about what games are in this series. In fact, I think it's beautiful in a sense that all these competing analyses of this series coexist. I'm all too aware that the internet does not need any more more pointless debates over frivolous topics. I'm really just trying to demonstrate that the disagreement about what games are in this series, like, 
exists out in the wild and isn't just an artifact of my weird survey. And yes, the survey itself, as it did last time, indicates that there is no consensus. That has not changed. However, it's worth noting that it was considerably closer to a consensus than it was the first time around. The most common response to the 2021 survey was one particular list of 18 games. However, that list was only given by one and a quarter percent of survey respondents. Almost 99% of people answered with something else. For the 2023 survey, well, since there were more options for each game than just yes or no, extracting each respondent's personal list of mainline Super Mario games from their answers was a little bit more involved than last time. The way I have decided to count it is that if someone counts a game as part of the series, then they probably will have said it's a mainline Super Mario game for the question that asks them to categorize it, and yes to the question that asks if it's a distinct entry in the Super Mario series. So their personal list of games should be the set of games where they answered in that specific way to both questions. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Right, the bottom line here is that the most common list of games was this list of 19 games, which is the same list as last time but with Mario Wonder at the end. That is to say, Mario 1, both Mario 2s, 3, Land, World, Land 2, 64, Sunshine, New Soup, Galaxy, New Soup Wii, Galaxy 2, 3D Land, New Soup 2, New Soup U, 3D World, Odyssey, and Wonder. No surprises there, that's exactly what I expected. However, this particular list represents a whopping 5.7% of survey respondents. It's still a very small portion of the sampled population, but it's crossed the 5% threshold. The probability of a random person who filled out this survey agreeing with this exact list of 19 games is slightly higher than rolling a nat 20, but that's not the most striking difference between the results of the two surveys. That would be how the sheer size of the data is a whole order of magnitude larger in the newer survey. But the next most noticeable thing after that can be seen by looking at the series inclusion rates of each game individually. And what I mean by inclusion rate here is the percentage of people who included a specific game as mainline and distinct of the people who said something other than unsure. So you can see on this summary table for the results for Super Mario Bros. Wonder that the inclusion rate here is slightly higher than the total percentage of participants who called it mainline and distinct. In the 2021 survey, there was a relatively smooth gradient from the games most people considered part of the series to the games most people considered not part of the series. There's a few somewhat noticeable jumps here and there, but that's to be expected. If you compare that to the results of the 2023 survey, it is drastically different. Here, I'll cut out the ones that basically nobody included so you can see it more clearly. Look, there's suddenly this huge gap between these 19 games and everything else. All 358 games were either included by over 80% of respondents or less than 50%. There was nothing at all between those two things. That is a night and day, undeniable phase transition between these two sets of games. So how did this happen? Why is this difference so pronounced? I can think of several possible factors, which I'll quickly summarize. First of all, the existence of the video How Many Super Mario Games Are There? The fact that I've already made a video about this subject and that it's one of my most popular videos means that the people who heard about this new survey that I made and were interested in participating in it are pretty likely to have already seen that video. And like, there's no way that wouldn't impact how they end up taking the survey. Not only do they have knowledge of other people's opinions that they otherwise wouldn't have had, they also have knowledge of what I personally mean by the question that they otherwise wouldn't have had. In particular, this could mean that even though the survey asked people to give their personal opinions, someone who doesn't have a personal opinion on a particular game's status in the series but does have some knowledge of what other people think is pretty likely to want to conform to that understanding trying to answer the questions correctly. The other potential factors are caused by the survey itself. The fact that there are more possible classifications to choose from for each game means that for games where no consensus exists, you would expect the percentage of people choosing each individual option to be lower, thus making the divide between games where consensus exists and games where consensus does not exist much more substantial. The presence of these additional options could also mean that in some cases, people who would have called a game mainline if mainline and spinoff were the only choices instead find that one of these new options describes their opinion better. It could also simply be that just seeing more games itself changes the way people think about them. Perhaps some people who would have called Yoshi's Island Mainline when it was the only Yoshi game being asked about would then change their mind about it after seeing all the other Yoshi games on the list. The real cause was almost certainly a combination of all of these factors. And honestly, I just think it's really interesting that this massive difference in the data happened at all. Oh, and just to reiterate, the fact that the survey indicated that there is a clear consensus for each of these 19 games individually does not mean that this list of games is the consensus for what the Super Mario series consists of. Almost everyone who took the survey disagrees with this list in some way. They either think this list is incomplete, or some of these games shouldn't count, or they're just unsure about some of these. Here's a histogram showing the distribution of how many games people's lists included. The peak of the distribution is at 19 games, but it's not a very steep peak. There were almost as many people who included 20 games as there were who included 19 games. Additionally, this specific list of 19 games only accounts for about half of the participants whose lists were 19 games long. Even among people who agreed that there are exactly 19 mainline games, this list was still not an actual majority opinion. You might notice the distribution here is somewhat lopsided. The left side 
side of the curve drops off a little bit faster than the right side. The median value isn't 19 games, it's 21 games. And while I'm at it, the mean value is a little under 24 and a half games. I don't think taking the mean is that useful in this case, however. What you're not seeing on this histogram is the region I've cut off to the right, counting lists with considerably more games. While this part of the chart is pretty flat, there's still quite a few survey respondents that gave numbers of mainline games as high as 10 times the median, so that skews the mean value upwards quite a bit. Just for good measure, I might as well zoom out all the way on the vertical axis here too. The peak of the distribution still doesn't come anywhere close to being an actual majority. Oh, these different averages are why the number in the thumbnail is around 20-ish, by the way. The most common answer is 19, but the median answer is 21. But either way, it's around 20-ish games. Anyway, the strength and divide between these 19 games and everything else still had some significant side effects, even if it wasn't enough to actually create a total consensus. See, earlier I said that Super Mario Bros. Wonder is unambiguously a mainline game according to the survey results. However, Wonder is not the only game on the survey outside of Mario 1, 3, and World that passed this threshold, because just barely over 95% of participants said that Super Mario 64 is mainline. In fact, if you don't ignore the unsures, Mario 64's inclusion rate is even higher than Mario Wonder. According to this new survey, there are five games that basically everyone agrees are in this series, Mario 1, 3, World 64, and Wonder. And that changes everything! This seriously throws a wrench into my whole analysis from part one. I just kind of assumed that a small but statistically significant number of people categorically exclude all the 3D Mario games as a set. They'd say the mainline games are only the 2D platformers and the 3D platformers are something else. But if over 95% of people individually consider Super Mario 64 to be mainline, that can't be the only thing going on here. I think for the galaxies and 3D places, it's the reasons I went over in part one. For both of these pairs, the two games are more similar to each other than they are to the rest of the series, so some people, but not many, think of them as their own thing. What the heck is going on with Sunshine and Odyssey? Why would anyone consider Mario 64 mainline but neither of these games? I guess both of these games did change a lot about the Mario formula, but they are way more similar to Mario 64 than 64 is to literally anything that came before it. However, this isn't really that significant. This inconsistency could just be random noise. Speaking of which, a lot of people who saw part one were curious about why exactly the number of people who said Mario 1 is mainline wasn't 100%. What on earth is Super Mario Bros if it isn't a Super Mario game? And thanks to the increased number of options people could give for each game, I can now actually check instead of needing to speculate. So, 98.5% of survey participants said that Super Mario Bros is a mainline Super Mario game and a distinct entry in the series. And just about 1% said that it's a mainline Super Mario game, but not a distinct entry in the series. And by reading through the other answers given by people who classified Mario 1 in this way, including where I asked them directly to explain their reasoning, I can figure out what people meant by this. A handful of people suggested that Mario 1 used to be an entry in the series, but that it's since been supplanted by one of its many reissues, like All Stars or Deluxe. However, a much more common thing, even outside of the small group who classified Mario 1 in this way, was people who expressed confusion about what exactly I meant by distinct entry. And yeah, that's fair. I was deliberately vague in the survey when I described all the categories, because the whole point of the survey was to see what people think the categories mean in the first place. But if someone taking the survey doesn't have a thing that they think distinct entry in the Super Mario series means, and I go out of my way to not tell them what I think it means, then yeah, they're probably just going to be confused. And since people don't like skipping questions, instead of saying they're unsure because they don't know what I mean by distinct entry, they felt obligated to figure out what I meant by distinct entry. But since I purposefully didn't tell them because I really just want to know what they think it means, they ended up becoming frustrated by the whole experience. And that is entirely my fault, so I would like to apologize to everyone who felt that way taking this survey. In retrospect, I should have made it more clear that you're supposed to say unsure for any question you don't know how to interpret. Anyway, of the people who said Mario 1 is mainline but not distinct, most of them seem to have interpreted distinct as meaning distinctive, as in, does this game particularly stand out? And under that interpretation, it's quite reasonable to say that Mario 1 isn't distinct. After all, just about every single aspect of this game has been reused countless times in every other corner of the franchise. Therefore, it is a mainline Super Mario game, but not a distinct entry in the Super Mario series. This is pretty different from how most people taking the survey interpreted the distinct entry question, which was more like, if you were to make a list of games in the Super Mario series, would you count this game separately? Most people used mainline but not distinct to mean, yes, this is a mainline Super Mario game, but that's only because it's the same game as something else that came before it. Anyway, fans of arithmetic might have noticed that we still haven't accounted for everyone in this overly detailed analysis of the least ambiguous game in the series. 98.5% said that it's a mainline distinct entry, and 1% said that it's mainline but not distinct. But what about the other half a percent? What do they think this game is? Yeah, it's only half a percent, but that's not no one. This was a really big survey, so 0.5% of participants is still a couple dozen people who said that Super Mario Bros. is not a mainline Super Mario game. 
Well, about half of that half a percent said they're unsure about this game, and judging from what people in this group said about their reasoning, they were mostly just confused by the question, which is fair enough. So that leaves another quarter of a percent. And I am happy to report that most of them said it's not a Mario game. I think it's safe to characterize this group as jokesters. I have to hand it to them, it's a pretty good bit to claim that you don't think Mario 1 is a Mario game. It is a simple, unavoidable fact of internet surveys that you are going to get goofs. But mostly it's reassuring that so few people said this. A dozen or so people not taking the survey seriously out of five and a half thousand is a pretty good ratio. That definitely makes me more confident that these results are meaningful. On the other hand, that 1% who called Mario 1 mainline but not distinct probably shouldn't be dismissed. If this many people used mainline but not distinct to mean mainline but not distinctive, then the method I described before for extracting someone's personal list of games from their survey results isn't going to be completely reliable, and I don't have a solution to that. These competing interpretations make analyzing the data from the survey a little bit messier, but fortunately, I love nuance, so I don't think that's a problem. Regardless, the distinctive interpretation really was only used by a very small portion of participants. 91.5% of people said that the 3DS game New Super Mario Bros. 2 is a distinct entry in the Super Mario series, and I refuse to believe that any significant fraction of those people were trying to say that this specific game has something distinctive that sets it apart from the rest of the series. Speaking of New Soup 2, you might recall from Part 1 that New Soup 2 was considered mainline more often than New Soup DS, which was really weird. This time around, that discrepancy is completely gone. I am now very confident that the strange results for the New Soup games in the original survey were merely an artifact of the way that survey was formatted. Some people who otherwise would have included New Soup 1 didn't because they didn't recognize what game New Super Mario Bros. DS was referring to. In the updated survey, where for every single game I included the box art, system, year of release, and a link to the Super Mario wiki for more information, the risk of people being confused about which game they're being asked to categorize was all but eliminated. Now at this point, you're probably wondering, or even Super Mario Bros. wondering, are they going to spend this whole video listing mildly interesting results from that survey? And I promise I do have an actual point that I'm building towards, it's just that I spent half a year gathering this data, and during that time I've been slowly accumulating thoughts and observations about both the data itself and the way I chose to collect it. So let's see, what else was weird about the results of the 2021 survey? Oh right, if you've been pausing this video to carefully read over all the big tables of spreadsheet data I've been showing and also have a perfect memory of my previous video on this subject, then you've probably noticed one notable game that was present in the original survey that's absent from these charts. To recap, in that video I had a hard time figuring out how to interpret the way people classify Bowser's Fury. Since Bowser's Fury only exists as part of the bundle Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, the thing it even means to ask if it's a Super Mario game is completely different than it is for all the other games where it's ambiguous if they're in the series. Like, you can imagine someone where if they were to make a list of games in the Super Mario series they'd include Bowser's Fury on that list, but if you ask them directly is Bowser's Fury a mainline Super Mario game, they'd say no because it doesn't exist as a standalone game. Conversely, you can imagine someone who doesn't consider Bowser's Fury to be part of the series, but if you ask them, is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury a distinct entry in the series, they'd say yes, because 3D World is a mainline Super Mario game, and this game is a port of Super Mario 3D World, but with enough changes to make it distinct. So due to this complexity, I had literally no idea what the data for Bowser's Fury in the original survey implied. I spent a very long time thinking over what I could have done differently, what the best way to ask about Bowser's Fury would have been, until finally, in 2023 with the new survey, I still didn't have the answer, so I just didn't include Bowser's Fury. Now I did still include Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, don't worry. In fact, this time around, this was the game closest to 50% inclusion, not Yoshi's Island. And a lot of people did go out of their way to tell me explicitly what they think about specifically Bowser's Fury, which is very helpful. I can't really use this for data, since, you know, this only covers the portion of respondents who have a strong enough opinion on Bowser's Fury to tell me about it unprompted, but it's helpful nonetheless. So right, despite my best efforts, I could not think of a way to ask about Bowser's Fury where I would be able to interpret what the results mean. If I included a paragraph of text explaining in precise detail what exactly it is that I'm trying to ask, a lot of people definitely wouldn't read it because in order to get that far into the survey, they've already had to classify hundreds of other Mario games, so they'll be exhausted by that point. I could have shuffled the order of the questions to mitigate those effects, but I'm asking two questions about each game and Google Forms doesn't have a way to shuffle the question order while keeping pairs of questions next to each other like this. I do not recommend using Google Forms for anyone else who wants to make a big survey like this. It is the incorrect tool for this purpose. I could have also made the survey not take as long 
long by grouping some of the games together instead of asking about all 358 one at a time, but that would have introduced massive bias into the results. If someone tells me they consider every Mario Kart game to be a major spin-off, how am I supposed to know what games they consider Mario Kart games? Sure, I can probably assume they're talking about games like Mario Kart DS, Mario Kart Wii, and Mario Kart 8, but are they including Mario Kart Tour, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, Mario Kart Arcade GP, Super Mario Race, Famicom Grand Prix 2, 3D Hot Rally? The only way to know for sure is to ask about every game individually. I could have made special categories for just Bowser's Fury, but I could not justify to myself doing that for Bowser's Fury without doing the same thing for every single other game included as a side mode or sub game of some other release. And that's a problem, because if I asked people to classify every single WarioWare micro game, nobody would ever complete the survey. So unfortunately, I don't have data for Bowser's Fury this time. Around 47% of participants said 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is a mainline and distinct game in the Super Mario series. And I have no idea what that implies about Bowser's Fury by itself. However, someone else can make that video. Now, just because 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is the closest to 50%, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the most ambiguous game this time. Remember, there are way more than two possible ways people were able to classify each game. Almost half of everyone converging on one specific answer is, all things considered, a pretty significant plurality. What we really want is to see which game had the lowest number of people give the most common response. That's our best indication that people disagree with each other for what to call it. And by that metric, the most ambiguous game in the survey was the arcade game Donkey Kong Jr. The most common classification for this game was that it's a major spin-off and not a distinct entry in the Super Mario series, an answer given by almost 19% of participants. Even though people were in general agreement that DK Jr. is not a mainline game, there's no consensus at all if it counts as a major spin-off, minor spin-off, not a Mario game, or even non-canon. And even more fun, there's also disagreement on if it counts as a distinct entry in the Super Mario series or not. Right, so since each game had two questions, one to put it in a category and one for if it's a distinct entry in the Super Mario series, this led to the awkward position of asking people if a game is a distinct entry and a series they literally just told me they don't think it's part of. This was intentional, kinda. My thought process was that doing it this way would allow for more nuanced responses in some cases. People could say things like, sure, Hotel Mario is non-canon, but it's definitely still a distinct entry in the series. Or, I'm not sure what Mario Party Fushigi no Koro Koro Kesher 2 is, but it's definitely not a Super Mario game. But, something I didn't expect but probably should have anticipated was that a lot of people used distinct entry but not mainline to mean it's not part of the Super Mario series, but it is a distinct entry in the series that it is part of. And I think that's reasonable enough. I did specifically say in the Super Mario series, but in a case where that doesn't make sense as a thing to ask, interpreting it instead as a different question that does make sense to ask is completely fair. This isn't the Linda problem. I'm not going to say these people are wrong for assuming that the person who asked the question wanted useful information out of the answer. Unfortunately, this really messes with the data. In particular, it means the thing I just did to find which game is most ambiguous doesn't work. Donkey Kong Jr. isn't the game where the most people disagree on what it is, it's the game where the most people disagree on how to place it into the categories I gave them, which is a subtle but important distinction. Since a lot of these categories mean very similar things, it makes sense that in a lot of cases people wouldn't have a strong preference for one over the other. A lot of people didn't distinguish between major spin-off and minor spin-off, and a lot of people didn't distinguish between non-canon and not a Mario game. Okay, different approach. The most ambiguous game is the game that the most people said they're unsure for. That distinction goes to Satellic a quiz game broadcasted in Japan through the Satellaview add-on for the Super Famicom from 1995 to 1999. People just didn't know what to make of this game. Sure, it's not a mainline Super Mario game, but what is it? I don't know. It's weird. I gotta say, by the way, that compared to the process of making the first video, it's really great having the actual numbers for games like this. It absolutely was worth the trouble of the very slow process of gathering the data. I no longer need to speculate on what people think about the Game & Watch Watch and Game Watch games. As it turns out, these were the sorts of games people generally ended up using that non-canon category for, along with the edutainment games. The concept of canon in the context of Mario is a whole can of worms that I can get into later, but in this survey, people tended to either not use the category at all, or use it to mean something like, well, I don't want to say it's not a Mario game, because, like, it has Mario in it, but it's definitely not a real Mario game. Speaking of which, the not a Mario game category was a funny one, because a lot of people before taking the survey expressed confusion about it, but as soon as they started, they immediately understood what it's for. See, the chronological list I provided of 358 Mario games did not begin with Super Mario Bros or Donkey Kong. It began with the Game & Watch game Ball, which almost everyone agrees is not a Mario game. But is it? Ball has been re-released multiple times as a Mario game, in Mario the Juggler, Game & Watch Gallery 2, and most recently in Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. So it definitely has a place in the history of Mario, so does that make it a Mario game? That's easy to answer. No, it does not. Again, almost everyone agrees Ball is not a Mario game. However, there are some other not really Mario games where this gets trickier, most notably with Yume Kojo Doki Doki Panic. As we all know, even though Doki Doki Panic 
Panic was originally released in Japan as a licensed game promoting Fuji Television's Dream Factory 87 event, it began its development as a tech demo, testing out some features that would later be used in Super Mario Bros. 3, such as picking up and throwing enemies, and levels that can scroll both horizontally and vertically. And that didn't go unnoticed. When Doki Doki Panic was released, critics at the time were like, wow, this feels a lot like a Mario game. Like, if you were to replace the playable characters with Mario characters, and if I lived in a part of the world where I'd be unaware of the Yume Kojo event that's going on, I would be fully convinced that this is a direct sequel to Super Mario Bros. And in retrospect, Doki Doki Panic has had a massive impact on the mainline Super Mario series. So many enemy designs and other concepts established in this game have gone on to appear in countless Mario games. But is that enough to make Doki Doki Panic part of the series? And the answer is... Nope, probably not. And this again is the sort of thing where having these survey results is useful. As an experienced Super Marioologist, I can easily think of examples of games whose classifications could be ambiguous, but it's nice to be able to check those assumptions against real data and confirm that sometimes these things really are not ambiguous. Among people who completed the survey, it is consensus that Doki Doki Panic is not a Mario game. Now, here's an interesting question. Not the one the video is named after, it's a different one. I think I've established pretty well by now that Super Mario Bros. is the most Super Mario game the game that the most people can agree is part of the series, probably just because of the way I chose to explain what the question means. But what is the least Super Mario game? In the 2021 survey, that was Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, but that was out of a highly curated selection of only the superest of Marios. In the 2023 survey, the game that the fewest people said was a distinct mainline entry in the Super Mario series was the Game & Watch game Chef. Well, technically it was a three-way tie between three Game & Watches, Chef, Fire Attack, and Oil Panic. But of those three, Chef had the fewest people say they were unsure how to classify it, so its adjusted inclusion rate is the lowest. And yeah, Chef? Not a Mario game. It's definitely less of a Mario game than Ball. The only connection to Mario that Chef has is in the Game & Watch Gallery series. It just barely qualifies for a Super Mario Wiki article. In fact, not too long after I originally released the survey, Chef and many other Game & Watches like it were removed from the Super Mario Wiki's list of games by date, which was the starting point I used for what games I put on the survey in the first place. And yet, you may notice that it still wasn't no one. A total of three people considered Chef to be both a mainline Super Mario game and a distinct entry in the series. And why shouldn't they? Chef is very important to Mario lore after all. To my knowledge, the Game & Watch Gallery version of Chef is the only time in the entire Mario franchise we've seen a baby Yoshi hatch from an egg laid by an adult Yoshi. It's made clear in other games that Yoshis lay eggs and that Yoshis hatch from eggs, but Chef is the only time a connection between those two things is established. However, I don't think that's what these three people had in mind. Looking at the rest of what's on these personal lists of included games, it seems like all three of them were trying to include every single game I asked about as a mainline Super Mario game. Although, worth pointing out, none of them actually committed to the bit and included all 358 games. The one who came closest included 357 of them. Every single game I asked about, except for Super Mario 3D World, which they said is not a Mario game. And yeah, that's a pretty good bit. Another thing we can do with the survey data to spot outliers is to plot the results on a graph. On this graph, the vertical axis is how many people called the game a mainline Super Mario game. The horizontal axis is how many people called it a distinct entry in the Super Mario series, and the size of each circle is the adjusted inclusion rate. I can't label the data points because then those labels would take up the whole screen and make everything unreadable, but I can mouse over them to see what they are. So in the upper right here, we have the cluster of the 19 games most people called part of the series, with the Mario Land games and New Soup U slightly separated from the rest. These three games in the upper middle are all fun edge cases. 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, New Super Luigi U, and 64DS. Following further to the left, we get a bunch of reissues of mainline games, from New Super Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe to Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. all the way down there. Following further down, there's some individual bubbles floating out of this boiling pot at the bottom of the chart. These are some of the weirdest games, most of which I already covered extensively in Part 1. Now, I would like to draw your attention to this constellation forming a trail out of the cloud of the hundreds of games almost nobody considers mainline. Here we have Super Mario RPG, the original Donkey Kong, Super Mario Run, Mario Bros. Arcade, the two main Maker games, and Yoshi's Island. This is a really interesting group of games to consider collectively as a set. The thing they appear to all have in common is that they're kinda mainline. All of these games individually have a lot of people consider them to be part of the series, but nowhere near an actual majority. This is contrasted with the triangle of games above this trail, which are all games where it's generally agreed that they're Super Mario games, but it's controversial if they should count as distinct entries in the series or not. But look at what games these are! Yoshi's Island is the game that's considered part of the series by Wikipedia, but not the Super Mario Wiki. Mario Bros. Arcade is considered part of the series by Strategy Wiki. The Maker Games and Run stand out as the games Wikipedia and the Super Mario Wiki agree are part of the series, even though most fans don't 
consider them part of the series. The type of ambiguity these games have is, in a sense, more substantial than the other ambiguous games I've mentioned. These aren't just controversial among fans in general. These games are controversial among the type of fans who write the wiki articles other fans get their lists of games from. And even though individual communities can and have come to a consensus for which games they should include as part of the series, they often come to wildly different conclusions. As I said in part one, this is one of the most popular series of games of all time, and its fans, generally speaking, do not agree on what games it consists of. So then, where exactly does this disagreement come from? Why is something as straightforward as what games are in this popular game series so open to interpretation? And personally, I'd say that it comes straight from the top. These wiki lists aren't based on the opinions of fans, they're based on what Nintendo has said. And Nintendo, the corporate entity, does not have an internally consistent stance on which games are and are not part of its flagship series. Nintendo's never made an official list of mainline Mario games. Well, sort of, right? Because Nintendo has made official lists of mainline Mario games. But it is true that there isn't an official list. There are multiple official lists that contradict each other. I talked about this in part one, so I won't linger on this, but the official Japanese Nintendo website and Nintendo of America's official website disagree with each other regarding which games count as part of this series. The funniest difference between these two lists, by the way, is that at the time of recording, the official Japanese website says the most recent game in the series was Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and the official American website doesn't include Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Yeah, I know, completely absent from the timeline, at least at the time of recording. Here's another sentence I can say, so later when I'm editing the video I can put some text on screen letting you know if that's still true. Anyway, these two websites aren't the only official lists out there. One I remember from my childhood was the booklet included in the Wii reissue of Super Mario All-Stars, and at the time I thought it was strange that Mario Land and Land 2 weren't included. That actually might have been the catalyst that got me thinking about this question in the first place. For a more recent example, this past March for Mar 10 Day, Nintendo of America posted a video featuring this very strange set of games. At first glance, this appears to be the subset of mainline games that are currently either available through Nintendo Switch Online or as full retail games for the Switch. However, like Nintendo of America's official website, this list skips the lost levels entirely, even though you can play that game on NSO. It also skips Maker 2, which isn't consistent with the official American website. For a much less recent example, the perfect edition of the Great Mario Character Encyclopedia from 1994 has coverage of quite a few games, only some of which it considers to be the main games in the series. I love how arbitrary the distinctions made here like Mario and Wario? Yeah, that's a main installment, but Wario's Woods? No way. And let's do another one. This video, made for the 35th anniversary of Mario 1 in 2020, lists its own strange set of games. This one is bizarre. So, the 2024 video included Land 2 but not Land 1, but the 2020 video includes Land 1 but not Land 2. It also skips Galaxy 2, New Soup 2, and New Soup U. That's the weirdest one to me. New Super Mario Bros. U. Like, at the time this video was posted, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe was a recently released game. This is fun functionally a commercial for Mario, and whoever put it together made the decision to completely skip over a game that had recently been made available for purchase on the Nintendo Switch. You know what I think, though? I think the reason this list skips the two 2012 games is because the real thing this video is selling is the idea that the Super Mario series has been making steady forward progress for 35 years, with each subsequent game introducing exciting new concepts. And it would be inconvenient for that narrative to remind people of just how long the 2D Mario games in particular have been stagnating creatively. But let's take a step back. Is it fair to use these random pieces of promotional material as though they're the same thing as official lists? I mean, okay, that's the wrong question. They are, objectively, lists of games that come from an official source. But does a game's inclusion in a timeline on a website or a four-minute commercial really mean anything? Nintendo has this bad habit of avoiding crediting people for their work whenever it's legally possible. As a direct result of that, it is unknown whose responsibility it was to compile any of these lists of games. So you kind of have to attribute them directly to Nintendo. We don't know who specifically made this video that skips Super Mario Galaxy 2, so our only option is to say that Nintendo made a list of Super Mario games that skips Galaxy 2. I think that's a big part of why the Super Mario Wiki uses the official websites as the baseline for what games it considers part of the series. When Shigeru Miyamoto says that he considers Yoshi's Island a mainline game, well, that's not Nintendo saying that. That's just one person's opinion. When Shiro Mori calls Super Mario Bros. Wonder, quote, the first new 2D Mario game in almost 11 years, that's not the same thing as an official confirmation that none of the 2D games released between New Super you and wonder count as part of the series. But this website? That's a primary source. Since whoever compiled this list isn't credited, it must have been made by Nintendo. The truth is, there isn't any singular person you could ask to get the definitive answer for what games are in this series. As I'm sure we're all aware, the Super Mario series isn't the creation of one singular auteur who had some sort of grand plan from the start. Super Mario is a brand owned by a corporation, and that corporation has employed several different teams of artists to create games for this series. And those artists very well can have conflicting opinions about what exactly it is that they've collectively made. So what are we 
supposed to do with this? How are you supposed to know what games a popular series consists of when there's no fan consensus and official sources contradict each other? Uh, and that's an open-ended question. Despite the runtime of this video, I will not and cannot provide the definitive answer to it. All of this is inherently subjective. But, you may or may not know this about me, but outside of video games, my other interests include mathematics and linguistics, and I think it will be worthwhile to approach this question from both perspectives, as a mathematician and as a linguist. As a mathematician, the question is, what is the cardinality of the set of Super Mario games? And the answer naturally depends on what exactly a Super Mario game is. This approach requires crafting a precise definition and then determining how many things the definition applies to. As a linguist, the question is, how do English speakers generally populate the category of mainline Super Mario game? And answering it requires observing and analyzing the way this noun phrase is used by speakers. And these two approaches are in opposition with one another. A linguist will tell you that the mathematical approach is fundamentally misguided. You can't start with the definition and determine what things it refers to based on that. The purpose of a definition is to describe the way a term is actually used. And a mathematician may or may not tell you that the linguistic approach is simply ineffective. In a case like this, where no general consensus exists, merely describing what games people call part of the series doesn't bring you any closer to the actual number you're looking for. In this particular case, I believe that the linguist is correct. I do not think it is possible for any objective definition to be useful as a way of determining what games are in this series. However, that doesn't mean you can't try. And in the comments of part one, many, many people have tried to quote-unquote solve this problem by giving their own objective definitions. One of the most common of these attempts at creating an objective definition that I've seen is one that I'd like to spend some time really dissecting. A lot of people have suggested that all you need to do to figure out if something is part of the Super Mario series is to just look at the title. Very specifically, many people proposed that anything with Super in the title is part of the Super Mario series. I did briefly mention this idea in that video, but I just sort of dismissed it without really explaining why. Now, I don't want to say that this idea is wrong. We're analyzing art here, there are no wrong answers. It's more that if someone says something having Super in the title automatically makes it part of the Super Mario series in their opinion, I don't believe them. Like, you could think this way. I just don't believe that anyone arguing in good faith actually does think this way. Like, anything? Are you sure? Not just any Mario game, but anything with Super in the title? Super Metroid, Super Monkey Ball, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Batman v Superman, Superintendent Chalmers, the concept of supersymmetry, anything? But okay, clearly whenever someone says this, they don't literally mean anything. They're talking specifically in the context of classifying different Mario media, and I still don't believe that anyone thinks this way, but it's really interesting that someone might think that they think this way. Like, just the idea that someone might consider Mario Golf Super Rush, or Mario Super Sluggers, or Mario Super Picross, or the video you are currently watching to be part of the mainline series based purely on the presence of the word Super in their titles is just so delightful to me. It also raises some interesting questions about exactly which title counts for this. In Japan, Donkey Kong Country is called Super Donkey Kong, and Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island is just called Super Mario Yoshi Island, but during development it was called Super Mario Bros. 5. But alas, statistically speaking, this mentality isn't common enough to have an impact on the data. Like, if it were common to think that any game with Super in the title is a mainline Super Mario game, then what you'd expect to see is, like, if some pair of games exists where by most other factors there's equal equal justification for including them in the series, but one of them has Super in its title and the other doesn't, then you would expect that the game with Super in the title would have significantly more people classified as mainline than the other one. Now if only such a pair of games existed in the data, it would be the perfect way to test this hypothesis. And fortunately, there is. There's the Nintendo 64 game Mario Party and the Switch game Super Mario Party. Both of these are multiplayer party games featuring the Mario Ensemble. For the purpose of classification, the most significant difference between them is that Super Mario Party has a name that starts with Super Mario. You could not ask for a better pair of games to test how common this mentality is with. And looking at the survey data, the original Mario Party had an adjusted inclusion rate of 1.35%, and for Super Mario Party, that goes up to 1.34% one hundredth of a percentage point lower. Looking a little more closely, Mario Party 1 was called a mainline Super Mario game more often than Super Mario Party, and it was called a distinct entry in the Super Mario series more often than Super Mario Party. Statistically speaking, the fact that Super Mario Party is called Super Mario something does not have a significant impact on the way people classify it. So okay, this is still probably not what the people leaving this sort of comment actually mean. Maybe they're referring to some sort of intuition they have, that there is a certain way mainline Super Mario games are titled. The idea being suggested is that the 
title alone is, in some way, enough information to tell you if something is a mainline Super Mario game or not. They're just not, like, articulating what that way is precisely enough. And the thing is, I can guarantee that this alone does not work. Determining if an official Mario release is or is not an entry in the Super Mario series purely by looking at its title is 100% impossible. No matter how complicated the regular expression you're plugging it into is. How can I be so sure? Easy. Is Super Mario Bros an entry in the mainline Super Mario series? And I can guarantee you don't know. Just from the title, you do not have enough information to answer this question. You have no way of knowing if I'm asking about the NES game, the Game & Watch game, the Nelson Game Watch game, the Pinball Machine, the 1993 live action film, the manga, or the series of activity and coloring books. All of these things have the same exact title, and unless you classify all of them the same way, the title alone does not and cannot in any way tell you which of these things are part of the Super Mario series. You need more information than just the title. Now, some of you might be a little clever and say something along the lines of, well, sure, all of these things share a title, but one of them really is a mainline Super Mario game, and the rest of them are simply adaptations named after it. And yeah, that's a little bit more reasonable, but don't forget, there's two different games called Super Mario Bros. 2. Just because two pieces of media share a title, that doesn't necessarily indicate that one of them is the real one and the other one doesn't count. And from the opposite perspective, just because two pieces of media have different titles, that doesn't necessarily indicate that they are two distinct things. Like, quick pop quiz. From the titles alone, can you tell me collectively how many distinct mainline Super Mario games are in the following list? Super Mario Bros. Versus Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Super Mario Bros. Special. All Night Nippon Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. Classic NES series Super Mario Bros. New Super Mario Bros. New Super Mario Bros. Wii. New Super Mario Bros. Wii Coin World. New Super Mario Bros. U. New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. Super Mario Bros. 35. Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. Like, look at these titles. These titles do not contain the information necessary to figure out what these games are. Super Mario Bros. 35 is named as though it's a numbered sequel. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is named as though it's a port. Super Mario Bros. Special and Super Mario Bros. Deluxe have almost the same exact title, but Super Mario Bros. Deluxe is a remake and Super Mario Bros. Special is a disputably mainline sequel. Hey, anyone want to take a guess at what sort of game New Super Mario Bros. Wii Coin World is based on its title? Here's a hint. I'm not talking about World Coin from New Super Mario Bros. Wii, that's a different thing. And I'm also not talking about the 3DS game New Super Mario Bros. 2, the direct sequel to New Super Mario Bros. Wii that takes place in a world of coins. Yup, that's right, New Super Mario Bros. Wii Coin World is a slot machine. I know, right? Turning a hit video game into a slot machine? What is this, Konami? But no, this was made by Capcom. The Mario-themed slot machine on the survey that Konami made was Mario Roulette back in 1991, which is a completely different game. Honestly, it's probably a good thing that Mario games aren't consistently named in a way that indicates exactly what they are. Otherwise, every game would be titled like Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Winter Games. Now, even though looking at titles alone obviously doesn't work, maybe this idea still has some merit to it. I asked halfway through the survey what factors people were considering when classifying games, and 78% of people who gave an answer to that question said they were taking titles into account. But only four people said that title was the only of these factors they were considering. So maybe you can use this is super in the title method as a starting point and add more stuff to it until it becomes a useful definition. And in the comments from part one, many people have tried to do exactly that. And very often what they come up with is something like, the Super Mario series consists of the games developed by Nintendo for Nintendo consoles that have Super Mario in the title, excluding RPGs, party games, Mario Kart, sports games, and reissues of previously released Super Mario games. This is my favorite definition of Super Mario. Mario game. Not that it's the most accurate or useful definition, mind you, it's simply my favorite. I don't want to call out any specific YouTube commenter who said this, but I assure you I have seen variations of this several times, and it makes me smile every time I see it. The reason this is my favorite definition is that it's so meticulously crafted, it accounts for so many edge cases, and it includes I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater. I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater is a knitting game released in 1986. It was developed by Nintendo for the Nintendo Famicom, it has Super Mario Mario in the title, and its genre is sweater. It satisfies every single part of the definition. If someone says that this is their personal definition of the Super Mario series, they are saying that I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater is a mainline Super Mario game. And isn't that just delightful? I just love the idea of someone doing like a back-to-back -back playthrough of every Super Mario game where they play I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater after completing the lost levels. Now, some of the pro gamers watching right now are probably jumping into the comments section to say, Hi, Jan Measley? 
I'm a gamer, and I have a question about I am a teacher Super Mario sweater. Oh, what's your question? So, I couldn't help but notice that you sort of skipped over one part of the definition you gave. Uh, the part that says Super Mario games are video games. As a gamer, I'd like to think that I know a video game when I see one, and the footage you've been talking over doesn't look like a video game to me. No, this is definitely a video game. This is gameplay footage of the Famicom game I am a teacher Super Mario sweater. Uh, really? Because this looks like a Nico Nico video of someone knitting. Yeah. That's what the gameplay of I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater is like. This is a game about knitting. Okay, that's not a video game. Yes, it is. You insert the floppy disk into the Famicom disk system, input your measurements, and then you're shown the knitting diagrams for how to make a sweater that has your choice of a Mario character on it. That's a video game. But it's obviously not. Sorry, could you define video game for me? Remember, we're talking about technicalities right now, not the way words are actually used in practice. <sighs> I don't know. Interactive software with a visual display for the purpose of entertainment? Yes, thank you. In that case, yes. This is unambiguously a video game. In what way? In precisely the way you described. But this isn't even software. It's a sweater. Well, you wear it, and it is soft. That makes it software. That's a joke, the software is on the floppy disk that you put in the Famicom disk system. But that's not interactive, it just shows you knitting diagrams. No, you gotta put in your measurements, pick your favorite Mario character, and you gotta press a button to advance to the next slide every time you complete a row of the sweater you're knitting. That's interactivity. But that's not entertainment, it's just showing you how to knit a sweater. I'm sorry, do you not find knitting to be entertaining? Knitting is a very popular hobby. Just because it's not your thing doesn't mean it doesn't count as a form of entertainment. Like, I get it, this game is really weird and different. But in my opinion, I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater is unambiguously a video game. And if you disagree with that assessment, I don't think you're ready yet for the stuff I consider to ambiguously be video games. Now, some might still reject the idea that this truly works as a counterexample to the claim that it's possible to know what series a game is in based on its title. See, you might have noticed by now that this game isn't just called Super Mario something. Super Mario Sweater is a subtitle, after I Am A Teacher. And you might conclude from that that this isn't titled like a Super Mario game, it's titled like an I Am A Teacher game. I've even seen some people assume and then confidently claim that I Am A Teacher was a whole series of licensed sweater games, with each one featuring knitting patterns based on different media. And this was simply the Super Mario themed installment. And if you're the sort of person who believes it's possible to figure out what series a game is part of just by looking at its title, that's a pretty reasonable assumption. However, you can just like, check? True, there is another I Am A Teacher game for the Famicom. However, it's not like the same game is Super Mario Sweater but with a different media property. This game is called I Am A Teacher Teami no Kiso, The Basics of Knitting, released about a month after Super Mario Sweater. Teami no Kiso is primarily a knitting tutorial that serves as a companion piece to the other game. Because, you know, despite being called I Am A Teacher, Super Mario Sweater in no way teaches the player how to knit. It assumes that you already know how to knit and just displays the knitting diagram so you can make a jumper featuring your favorite jumper. And that's why I think I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater is the perfect example of why you can't judge a game based on its title. It's a a matter of personal opinion if this game is part of the Super Mario series or not. And I'll concede it's also subjective whether or not it's a video game, but it's definitely not a teacher. It's the process of knitting a sweater. By the way, it was fantastic seeing everyone taking the survey's reactions to learning that this game exists. Even though people didn't generally say they're unsure for how to classify I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater for the main questions, in the open answer sections it was by far the game that the most people were flabbergasted by. By my count, six separate people went out of their way to specifically ask what the heck I Am A Teacher Super Mario sweater is, though they all phrased it more strongly than that. So, to all six of you, I hope this has been a satisfactory answer. Oh, for the record, some sources claim that this game could connect to a sewing machine to automatically make the sweaters for you. Uh, that's not true. There does seem to have been a peripheral made for Super Mario sweater, but like, it wasn't a sewing machine. You don't use a sewing machine for knitting. Sewing and knitting are not the same thing. The Mario game that was compatible with a sewing machine was Mario Family for the Game Boy Color, which is a completely different game. Anyway, even though it's my favorite example of one, I Am A Teacher Super Mario sweater is far from the only game that has Super Mario in the title that's generally agreed to not be part of the series. It just happens to avoid the most common caveats commenters create for their title-based definitions. Another of my favorites is the MS-DOS game Super Mario Bros. and Friends When I Grow Up, which is a digital coloring book developed by Brian A. Rice, Incorporated. <laughs> yeah, that's just a guy. <laughs> but he incorporated himself. <laughs> This game is obviously not part of the mainline series, but it's still called Super Mario Bros. something. Or what about Super Mario Bros. Print World? That's a PC application for printing out pictures of Mario characters. Are MS-DOS art utilities not your thing? No problem. Step right up to Super Mario Attack, a Super Mario World-themed redemption game with a title that follows literally the exact same naming conventions as the mainline Super Mario series. Not to be confused with Super Mario World, the other Super Mario World-themed redemption game that's titled like a mainline Super Mario game. And how could I forget 
Capcom Super Mario Fushigi no Janjan Land. That's a Super Mario Advance 4 themed metal game with a title in the form of Super Mario Something Land, just like Super Mario 3D Land. But of course, none of these are for Nintendo hardware. In which case, I present for your consideration Puzzle and Dragons Super Mario Bros. Edition, the long-awaited collaboration between Puzzle and the Super Mario Bros. Edition of Dragons. Compared to the game's definitions like this often explicitly exclude, like Super Mario Kart or Super Mario Strikers, these are the sorts of games where it's way more unambiguous that they're not part of the mainline series. It's just that people often don't consider the possibility that a game like Super Mario Attack would exist, so they don't think to exclude it. It's not that it's impossible for a definition of this form to accurately describe someone's analysis of the Super Mario series. It's more so that when someone uses this title-based approach, more often than not, it represents a failure to account for the breadth of the thing they're trying to describe. And in most other cases, it's because they don't think the Super Mario franchise even has a mainline series of games, and they've chosen a very strange way to express that idea. I want to believe that at least some of the people who describe the Super Mario series in this way genuinely believe it. Surely, at least one person exists somewhere out there who considers I am a teacher Super Mario sweater and Super Mario Bros. and friends when I grow up to be just as important to the Mario canon as Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And yet, I still think that when someone says something like this, they're usually leaving out some unstated assumptions. Foremost of these is one I can't believe it's taken this much video to get to, the assumption that mainline Super Mario games are platformers. There's a sense in which it's more elegant to define something in terms of what it is rather than what it isn't. Of course a definition like this that tries to exclude all the weird edge cases one at a time is going to accidentally forget about some of the weirdest edge cases. So here's a more reasonable sounding definition. The Super Mario series consists of the platformer games made by Nintendo where Mario is a playable character and Super is in the title, excluding reissues of previous games. Well, this is a juicy one. From a purely linguistic perspective, this definition is pretty decent. Sure, some people might disagree with some of the individual games this definition includes or excludes, but for a lot of people, this accurately describes the way they conceptualize the Super Mario series. But from a mathematical perspective, this definition is horribly vague, to the point of being absolutely useless as a way of determining if any specific game is part of the series or not. Like, different people can agree that this definition describes their personal view of the Super Mario series, but while disagreeing on what specific games it applies to. Let's start here. The word platformer here isn't as helpful as you might assume it to be. This isn't just me being pedantic like I was with I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater. Platformer really isn't any less ambiguous of a term than Super Mario game, and the Mario games where it's ambiguous if they're platformers or not are some of the most notably controversial games. Is Super Mario Run a platformer? What about Super Mario Maker 2? Or Super Paper Mario? In fact, let's look a little more closely at Super Paper Mario in particular. Is this game a platformer? For those who haven't played it, Super Paper Mario is a game for the Wii that features both platforming and RPG mechanics, but it plays a lot like a platformer. I would describe it as a platformer with added RPG mechanics, whereas a game like Super Mario RPG is an RPG with added platforming mechanics. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that in terms of gameplay, Super Paper Mario is more similar to Super Mario Bros. than Super Mario Bros. is to Super Mario 64. Sure, this game is very narrative-driven, and the combat emphasizes character stats which can be leveled up, and there's a turn-based battle system that shows up exactly once, but it's still mostly a platformer. The goal of each chapter is to physically navigate to the end of a level, through a mastery of movement-based mechanics that include jumping. That's platforming, but it's not just platforming. There are still the RPG mechanics, and those may or may not disqualify this game from being a platformer. But on that note, a game being a platformer isn't necessarily a requirement for it to be in the series in the first place. Super Mario RPG had a higher inclusion rate than Super Paper Mario, and this happens to be one of those games with a title that just tells you directly what it is. Although, Super Mario RPG does still have platforming in it. It's not the core gameplay like it is for Super Paper Mario, but it's still there. In fact, all the Mario RPGs are kinda like platformers. Mario and Luigi Bowser's Inside Story, a game about the story inside of both Mario and Luigi Bowser, features several whole sequences that are kinda like 2D platformers. Or like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door has these Bowser intermissions where this RPG turns into a mainline style platformer where you play as Bowser. Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga not only has platforming sections, it even has the word super in its title, technically. So like where exactly do you draw the line between the RPGs and platformers? Is it even a line that makes sense to draw in the first place? For that matter, what about puzzle platformers like Mario vs. Donkey Kong or Mario and Wario? Or arcade style platformers like the Mario Bros. arcade game or Hotel Mario? Platformer is a very diverse genre and Mario games have explored a lot lot of the possibilities along its boundaries. What about a platformer where you can't jump, like Captain Toad Treasure Tracker or Mario Cement Factory? What about a fighting game that includes an action platformer single player campaign like Super Smash Bros. Brawl? What about a platformer-ish edutainment game like Mario's Time Machine? What about an auto runner like Super Mario Run or Mario Clock? What about an arcade-style platformer that's also a competitive match-free puzzle game like Wrecking Crew 9000?
98. True, most of these examples don't fit the definition regardless, but the point still stands that Mario games, taken as a whole, exist along the entire spectrum between platformer and non-platformer. And a definition like this only works as a tool for classifying games if you can assume that everyone draws the line between those two categories in the same way. And to reiterate, not everyone even considers the platformers to be the only mainline games. Even though 80% of survey participants said they were considering genre, that's still 20% who didn't say they were taking a game's genre into consideration. That's almost as many as the number of people who said they considered classifications used by official sources to be a relevant factor. So if the RPGs are on the table, what about on-rail shooters like Yoshi's Safari? What about puzzle games like Dr. Mario or Alleyway? What about rhythm games like Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix or Mario Undokai? What about art utilities like Mario Paint? What about Mario Calculator? There are a lot of things that Mario games can be, and who's to say that the platformers really are the core games? But I think there's a distinction that can be made here between mainline and important. I think all of these games are important to some extent, but something can be important without being part of the series that it's important to. I wouldn't include Popeye or Alice's Adventures in Wonderland as part of the mainline Super Mario series, but they're still definitely important to it. Going back to this definition, another ambiguous aspect you may have noticed is the part where it excludes reissues. And like, what's a reissue? On the Super Mario wiki, reissue is the general term used for remakes, re-releases, and ports. There's a lot of overlap between the meanings of these terms, so calling all of them reissues solves the problem of needing to delineate exactly which releases count as which thing. It is pretty common to categorically exclude all reissues from a list of mainline games, but as was discussed extensively in part one, there is a lot of ambiguity surrounding which games count as reissues. The main question is, how much needs to be changed in a new version of an old game for it to count as a different game? And the answer to that doesn't just vary from person to person, it can also vary based on context. If you're talking about the history of level design in the mainline Super Mario series, it makes sense for Super Mario Advance 4 to be part of that discussion, because it has original levels. If you're talking about the history of character animation in the series, it makes sense to group Mario 1 and the Lost Levels together as two versions of the same game, because the Lost Levels reuses animation from Mario 1. If you're maintaining the official website for the Super Mario brand, it makes sense to include the new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe game separately, because that is a product available now for the Nintendo Switch system. However, there are other ways in which the distinction between original games and reissues can be ambiguous. After all, what's the deal with Super Mario USA? But I think that subject has already been covered extensively by, like, every other video about the history of the Mario series, so I'll move on. In a very similar situation, there's Tetris Attack, which is a Yoshi-themed puzzle game which originally in Japan was released as Panel de Pon without any of the Yoshi stuff. A stranger example is Crazy Kong, a game that's best described oxymoronically as an officially licensed bootleg of Donkey Kong. Like, it's Donkey Kong, but it's not. You know you're in for a good time when the Super Mario Wiki article has a lawsuit section. Ooh, there's even a link to the case summary so you can read all the details of exactly what happened. Okay, you can read through all that on your own time, I'm going to move on. The games these examples may or may not count as reissues of aren't generally called mainline Super Mario games anyway, so it's not as relevant how they're classified. But you know what is a mainline Super Mario game? Super Mario Bros. 3. But you're not looking at Super Mario Bros. 3, you're looking at a little game called Mario the Quick Change Artist from the Nintendo Entertainment system Nintendo Switch Online service. It's Mario 3, except you start in World 8 and you're given a bunch of items and extra lives. So like, does this count as a different game from Super Mario Bros. 3? On Nintendo Switch Online, these two games are listed separately, so should a full list of mainline Super Mario games include both? Uh, probably not. So what about NES Remix 2? The NES Remix games are these collections of weird remixed versions of classic NES games, including quite a few Mario games. Now, this absolutely does not mean that the NES Remix games are mainline Super Mario games. In fact, in fact, the single game that the fewest people called a distinct entry in the Super Mario series was the Wii U game NES Remix Pack the physical release containing NES Remix and NES Remix 2. And yet, NES Remix undeniably contains disassembled and reshaped elements from mainline Super Mario games. There is a lot of mainline Super Mario in NES Remix. NES Remix 2 in particular is very relevant because it contains a game called Super Luigi Bros, which is an alternate version of Mario 1 where you play as Luigi and you go left instead of right. I love Super Luigi Bros in the context of this discussion because it has the qualities of so many other notably ambiguous games, but like simultaneously. It's a direct port that barely changes anything, like New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. It's Super Luigi instead of Super Mario, like New Super Luigi U. It's a side mode within another game and doesn't exist as its own standalone thing, like Bowser's Fury. But what about Speed Mario Bros. from Ultimate NES Remix for the 3DS? It's Mario 1, but fast. That's it, they just increased the emulation speed. And who knows what they'll end up throwing in Nintendo World Championships NES Edition when that game drops this July. Uh, not to be confused with Nintendo World Championships 1990, which was, uh, the NES Edition of the Nintendo World 
World Championships. Hey look, that one had a weird version of Mario 1 in it too. But why stop there? If you're looking for weird versions of Mario 1 featured as sub-modes of other games, allow me to turn your attention to the WarioWare series. WarioWare games are made out of these micro-games, which are like mini-games, but way shorter. And almost every game in the WarioWare series has at least one micro-game specifically based on Mario 1. Earlier, when I was listing things that are officially titled Super Mario Bros, that list nearly doubles in length if you count micro-games. But would you believe there's edge cases here too for how to count that? <laughs> there's micro-games called Super Mario Bros and WarioWare, comma, ink, period, colon, mega, micro-game, dollar sign, exclamation point, WarioWare Twisted, WarioWare Touched, WarioWare Touched a second time, and in WarioWare Get It Together. The one from Twisted also reappears in WarioWare Gold, the one from Mega Micro Games shows up in Mega Party Games, just like every micro game from Mega Micro Games, and there's this micro game in Smooth Moves that's called Super Mario Brothers, which is slightly different from Super Mario Bros. And that's just the micro games that have that specific title. There have been so many WarioWare micro games based specifically on the NES game Super Mario Bros that they collectively add up to well over a hundredth of a milli game. And it's not just micro games based on Super Mario Bros, there's the Super Mario World micro game from Get It Together, the Super Mario Advance micro game from DIY Showcase, 2023's WarioWare Move It has micro games based on Super Mario Bros 3, Mario Bros, Yoshi's Island, Dr. Mario, Paper Mario the Origami King, Donkey Kong Jr., Super Mario 64 DS, Mario Pinball Land, and the WarioWare series itself. And yes, depending on how much you know about WarioWare, it may or may not seem weird that there would be micro games based on other WarioWare games, but there are very frequently. In universe, WarioWare is a game development studio that mass produces and sells these micro games, and all the micro games you play were made by Wario and his friends slash employees. These Nintendo themed micro games are made by 9Volt, or sometimes a different number volt, and 9Volt is a Nintendo fan, making micro games based on his favorite games. And his favorite games include the WarioWare series the series of games that he is from. There are ways you could try to interpret this fact so that it makes sense in-universe, but the WarioWare games themselves are uninterested in addressing this contradiction, and I love them for it. Anyway, are WarioWare micro games eligible to be considered mainline Super Mario games? They're clearly not the same thing as the games they're based on, so it's hard to call them reissues. And like, Bowser's Fury is a sub-game of a bigger release, and a lot of people consider that to be a mainline game. But also, these are micro games. They're not even mini games. It just feels wrong to say that a game where you jump on a exactly once then the game ends is a core installment of the franchise. Plus, diegetically, these are unlicensed bootlegs made by a fourth grader. If the company WarioWare existed in the real world, 9Volt would be sued by Nintendo for two million dollars. Now, even though these examples from NES Remix and WarioWare are very fun and weird, these aren't really that ambiguous. It's an interesting thought experiment to consider the possibility that someone might take these games into account, but like, they don't these barely even qualify as Mario games. However, there's this one weird version of Mario 1 that really genuinely does make classifying the mainline series a lot more complicated. When I was writing my previous video about the subject, there's this one fact about Super Mario Bros and the Lost Levels that I kinda didn't notice at the time. See, there's this arcade game called Versus Super Mario Bros that I described as mostly using levels from Mario 1 with tweaks to make them harder, and with some levels taken from the Lost Levels. What I had failed to notice at the time was the relative release states of these games. Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels and Versus Super Mario Bros. were both released in 1986, but Versus Super Mario Bros. came first. And no, it's not because these two games were in development simultaneously and Versus happened to come out first. In 2010, Shigeru Miyamoto directly confirmed that it was the experience of creating new, harder levels for Versus Super Mario Bros. that inspired Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels. Versus Super Mario Bros. wasn't a combination of levels from two previously released games. It's the intermediary stage between Mario 1 and the Japanese Mario 2. And think about what that implies. Versus Super Mario Mario Bros. is a reworked version of Mario 1 that adds some original levels. The Lost Levels is a reworked version of Versus that adds even more original levels, with none of the levels from Mario 1 remaining. This is just the ship of Theseus again. Every individual part of the ship is replaced until nothing from its original form remains. Is it still the same ship? And if not, at what point did it become a different ship? Enumerating the games in the Super Mario series requires developing an answer to a classic philosophical paradox, and I cannot believe I somehow missed that the first time. At this point, I think it makes sense to take a step back Back and reconsider the question that this video is about. I'll get back to this specific definition later because there is more to say about it, but for now, I'd like to try a different approach. What practical reasons might there be to develop opinions on which Mario games form the mainline series? Okay, maybe not practical. What I mean is, what personal goals might someone have where it's necessary to know which games are mainline Super Mario games to achieve them? More simply, why does anyone care? As someone who happens to care about this subject quite a lot, I personally can think of a lot of reasons someone might care about this. Maybe you want 
want to play every game in the series, but you can't do that without knowing what games are in the series. Maybe you're editing an article for a wiki that organizes information about a fictional subject by series, and you need to know where in the article a section about a specific Mario game should go. Maybe you're trying to figure out which AAA series of video games has the highest average Metacritic score, which you can't do without knowing for any particular series what games that series contains. But all of these reasons only make sense in a context where it's pre-assumed that the mainline Super Mario series even exists as a distinct subset of the Mario franchise. Any of these situations could be approached without necessarily making that distinction. So then, here's a different idea. Let's say you've heard good things about Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and you want to play it for yourself, but you've never played a Mario game before. And you don't want to jump into a recent installment in a long-running series without the appropriate amount of context. Which games do you need to play first so that when you play Mario Wonder, you're not missing anything? And the answer is simple. None of them. Mario Wonder is a heavily polished video game for all ages. Its target audience includes people who have never played a video game before. Like most Mario games, if you play Super Mario Bros. Wonder without any context, you are not missing anything significant. Well, let's say you're not satisfied with that answer. You don't care if the context you're missing is insignificant, you just don't want to miss anything. So if you want to play Super Mario Bros. Wonder with the full context for every single thing that's returning from a previous game, which games do you need to play first? It's definitely not all of them. For example, this wouldn't include any games released after Mario Wonder, but how many games does this line of reasoning lead to? Does this work as a way of finding which games are mainline? So let's try it! I'm not going to be comprehensive here, I'll just go far enough to demonstrate what this process is like. Generating the rest of this list will be left as an exercise for the viewer. So, let's start with basic gameplay stuff. Super Mario Bros. Wonder is an evolution of the new Super Mario Bros. style of 2D Mario gameplay. All the new soups are similar enough to each other that you could probably skip all but the first one though. Oh, you also gotta play New Soup Wii because that's the one that introduced 4-player co-op. New Soup DS was a sort of reboot based heavily on Mario 1, but it also carries over plenty from Super Mario World. Super Mario World itself builds on a lot of ideas established in Mario 3, so you gotta play that one too. Mario 1 of of course, builds extensively on ideas established in the arcade game Mario Bros, which in turn was a spin-off of Donkey Kong. New Soup DS also brings in a lot of features from the 3D games, especially Super Mario 64 DS. Yes, you do need to specifically play the DS remake, because otherwise you'll be missing the context for the minigames in New Super Mario Bros, but obviously you can't play the remake without playing the original first, so Mario 64 is here too. Now, Mario 64 DS features Yoshi with a set of abilities very directly influenced by Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island, so you do need to play Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Flutter Jump shows up in Mario Wonder 2, so even if you think 6040S is skippable, this game definitely is not. I could keep going just based on gameplay mechanics, but now is a good time to start looking at story elements, especially characters. Super Mario Bros. Wonder has quite a few playable characters, most of which are from games we've already put on this list, but Daisy is from Super Mario Land, Nabbit is from New Super Mario Bros. U, Luigi is from the original Mario Bros., and Toadette, of course, is from Mario Kart Double Dash. Mario Kart Double Dash is an installment in the Mario Kart series, building on mechanics established in Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64. This game's cast of playable characters includes Wario from Super Mario Land 2, Bowser Jr. and Petey Piranha from Super Mario Sunshine, Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong from Donkey Kong Country, King Boo from Luigi's Mansion, Catherine from Doki Doki Panic, and Waluigi from Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis is a spiritual successor to Mario's Tennis for the Virtual Boy, so that one makes the list too. The Nintendo 64 game also has some cross-platform connectivity features with the other game called Mario Tennis, the one that's a tennis-themed JRPG for the Game Boy Color, so you gotta play both games to get the full experience. Most of the playable characters in the Nintendo 64 game Mario Tennis were introduced in games that have already been listed, but there's also Donkey Kong Jr. from the arcade game Donkey Kong Jr. Still not done, though, because when both players in Mario Tennis choose the same character, the second player has a different color scheme, and Donkey Kong Jr.'s alternate color scheme gives him this different fur that kinda looks a little bit pink, doesn't it? Almost like Pink Donkey Kong Jr. from Donkey Kong Jr. Math. I could keep going. This isn't even remotely how far you could take this concept. I think this is enough to demonstrate that while this approach can be very interesting, it doesn't generate results that align with most people's understanding of the Super Mario series. An idea from one game can show up in another game without that necessarily indicating that the two games are part of the same series. Super Mario Odyssey features outfits based on Mario Paint. The title screen for Super Mario 64 is a variation of an idea that had previously been used in Mario Teaches Typing. Dr. Mario 64 has a cast of playable characters that mostly consist of enemies from Wario Land 3. There is an honest-to-goodness plot point in WarioWare Move It that assumes the player has played the two-player endless games from Rhythm Heaven Fever, and it is from this perspective that I think it would be the most reasonable to conclude that the divide between the mainline Super Mario games and everything else doesn't matter. If you want to play every Mario game, and you really want to make absolutely sure that you don't miss any context, then you should play every Mario game. You really should play Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, WarioWare DIY, Yoshi Topsy Turvy, Mario Artist Polygon Studio, Captain Rainbow, Rhythm Heaven Megamix, and Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics. However, 
Even that would mean you're missing out on some context. This whole time, I've been talking about games, but Super Mario is a multimedia franchise. One layer above the assumption that it makes sense to distinguish between mainline Super Mario games and other Mario games is the assumption that it makes sense to distinguish between Mario games and other Mario media. I'll admit, the cultural relevance of Super Mario World The Game Watch or Super Mario World The Roll Down Redemption game is pretty much none. The existence of these games amounts to fun trivia, but the same cannot be said about Super Mario World the Animated Series. That's Mama Luigi to you, Mario! <laughs> Dick Entertainment, pronounced like Deke, made a few animated shows based on Super Mario games, the most well-remembered of which being the Super Mario Bros. Super Show. Are the Deke cartoons part of the series? Almost certainly not. But are they important enough to the history of Mario to be worth experiencing alongside other legacy media? I think so, yeah. The Super Mario Bros. Super Show, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, and Super Mario World are common points of reference within the English-speaking side of the Mario fan community. Even though they're more or less completely disconnected from the games, I would consider them required reading for someone who wants the full Mario experience. And they are still occasionally brought up as part of this discussion, with people suggesting they're an honorary part of the series. Well, at least Super Show is. By my count, the Super Mario Bros. Super Show was mentioned by name by seven different people who took the survey, only two of which said something indicating that they counted as part of the series, and one of those two people said Slash J after it. So, you know occasionally. However, The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3? Not a single survey respondent thought to mention that show by name. I couldn't find a single instance of anyone specifically talking about The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 or the Super Mario World animated series. And regardless, most of the time when people talked about the Mario cartoons, it was either to suggest that they'd like to see other people's thoughts on these shows, which is why I'm talking about them now, or as an example of something that isn't relevant to the mainline Super Mario series. But these shows are not the only time Mario has been adapted into a different more story-driven medium. The manga adaptations come to mind, especially Super Mario Kun. Super Mario Kun is a very long-running Mario manga that's been going more or less continuously since 1990, written and illustrated by Yukio Sawada. It is really obscure outside of Japan, which is a shame because it's probably the most ambitious piece of Mario media uh, ever. Super Mario Kun is a manga adaptation of the entire Super Mario franchise. There are story arcs covering everything from Mario's Picross to Wario Master of Disguise to the Donkey Kong Country animated series. And yes, I said story arcs because Super Mario Kun is an episodic story that's been trying to adapt, I repeat, the entire Super Mario franchise into something vaguely resembling one cohesive narrative for over 30 years. And why yes, we could use this list of story arcs and one-shots from this manga as yet another list of mainline entries in the series. This list starts with Super Mario World, but we can add a few more games before that if we include the other manga that were made by the same artist before Super Mario Kun. This still doesn't fully capture the scope of what this manga is adapting though, because a lot of games are referenced without getting full arcs or one-shots. Now, uh, there is a catch. This manga's target demographic is younger children, just like the D cartoons. And the games too, I guess. Super Mario Kun uses its sprawling scope as the context with which to present some kinda basic slapstick jokes for kids. The narrative is there, but it's not really any more relevant to Super Mario Kun than it is to the source material. I assume that's the reason why English-speaking Mario fans don't seem to really care about this manga. I mean, usually when a Super Mario Wiki article has this many red links, it's because the article is about a game that came out, like, last week. But you know what's even more obscure than Super Mario Kun? The Super Mario manga by artist Kazuki Motoyama. It ran concurrently with Super Mario Kun for a while, and it's very poorly documented, but the set of games this manga uses for its story arcs is way weirder than Super Mario Kun. See, this was a combination manga strategy guide series, and each installment focused on a different game, seemingly regardless of how connected to Mario they are. I can't find the full list of what games it's based on anywhere, but what I can find is so perplexing. You know, it's funny, everyone who took the survey was like, hey, why is Tetris for the Game Boy on here? How could it possibly be a question if Tetris is part of the Super Mario series or not? But guess what? Here it is! An official piece of Super Mario media that includes Tetris as part of the series. What do you mean this character is Dr. Mario's daughter? Oh yeah, this manga even has stuff based on the 1993 movie, the live-action one. Oh that's right, the movies! Can't forget about those! The movies were brought up by survey respondents much more often than the Deke shows were, though again, it was usually either to say they'd like to see how other people would classify them, or as an example of something that's obviously not part of the series. However, a few people did specifically say that they consider the Super Mario Bros. movie or the The Super Mario Bros. movie movie to be part of the series, joking or otherwise. Actually, even more people than that specifically brought up the 2010 
2023 animated films specifically to give context for how they classified Wrecking Crew. A couple people even brought up the first theatrically released Mario movie, Super Mario Bros. Zupichi Hime Kyushutsu Daisakusen, or as English-speaking fans call it, Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, or as English-speaking fans who are in a hurry call it, the Mario anime. Getting back on track though, does it make sense to include non-game media as part of the series? Kingdom Hearts does it, so I guess anything is possible, but still probably not. So here's a better question. What even is a game? A lot of the time, people within this discussion say game to mean video game, as in only games can be part of the Super Mario series. It's a convenient shorthand that makes perfect sense most of the time, but once you start examining some specific cases, the distinction between game and video game becomes a lot more relevant. I have seen some people confidently assert that Super Mario Run can't be part of the Super Mario series because it is not a game. And that's wild to me. Of course Super Mario Run is a game, what are you talking about? But what I think people usually mean when they say that is that Super Mario Run is not a video game, which I still disagree with, but at least it makes more sense as a theoretical opinion someone could have. So is Super Mario Run a video game? I certainly think so, but also I think I am a teacher Super Mario sweater is a video game, so my personal conception of video game is definitely more inclusive than the average. But still, I legitimately can't think of a single reason why someone wouldn't consider it a video game unless they just categorically don't think phone games can be video games. And that's silly, isn't it? Like, Super Mario Bros. Wonder is also software that you can download for a small portable computer. There are plenty of reasons to disqualify Super Mario Run from being a mainline game in the series, but to disqualify it from being a video game just because you don't like the platform it was released for? Get serious. For the record, this thing, when Super Mario Run referred to Super Mario Bros. Wonder as the first Super Mario Bros. game in about 11 years, that's not a direct confirmation that Super Mario Run isn't a mainline Super Mario game. Look at how specific this is. The last side-scrolling entry in the Super Mario Bros. series of side-scrolling action games. That's talking about the Super Mario Bros. series, not the Super Mario series. It's slightly different. Anyway, it's still interesting to consider the idea of Super Mario games as a more inclusive category than Super Mario video games, because it opens up so many possibilities. Can a pinball machine be part of the Super Mario series? What about the German Super Mario Land board game, Das Super Mario Spiel? What about choose-your-own-adventure-style gamebooks like Double Trouble by Clyde Bosco? Some installments of Super Mario Kun have mazes at the end. Those are Mario games! I wasn't kidding when I said the 358 games in the survey were not comprehensive. I don't even have a good estimate for an upper bound on the total number of Mario Mario games that there are. That said, the idea of including these in the series is still mostly a curiosity. If something isn't a video game, it's very hard for it to satisfy, like, any of the other factors people tend to take into consideration when classifying games in this series. And that's what brings me to the single Super Mario game that, at the time of writing, I have the most conflicted opinions on. Super Mario Bros. That is, the Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. Is Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch a mainline Super Mario game? According to the survey participants, no. It didn't have the lowest inclusion rate, so it's not like there's total consensus that it's not part of the series, but it's still generally not considered a distinct mainline Super Mario game. Super Mario Run was included more often than this game. Super Paper Mario was included more often than this game. But why? Why isn't Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch a mainline Super Mario game? I talked about this in part one, and I'm not satisfied with the answer I came up with at the time. The only reason I could think of back then was that Game & Watches technically don't count as video games. But like, even if they're not technically video games, they are still games games and watches. This particular Game & Watch is a side-scrolling platformer. Why should it matter if it's not technically a video game if it still plays like video games in the mainline Super Mario series? And also, what kind of technicality even is that? The idea that this doesn't count as a video display? It does display visuals on a screen that change in response to player input. Like, is it really that important that the segments of this LCD screen aren't arranged in a dot matrix? I think that a Game & Watch can be a video game, and I think that Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch is a video game. Probably. And if I accept that, then I cannot justify to myself why this game shouldn't count as part of the Super Mario series. I understand why others exclude it, but personally, I kind of think it should count. But only kind of. Like, the main reasons people tend to bring up for why other games shouldn't be counted just don't apply here. Yes, it shares its title with the NES game, but that doesn't make it the same game. Lest we forget the two separate games called Super Mario Bros. 2, it's clearly already fine for two different games of the series to share a title, and from a game design standpoint, Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch is absolutely not the same experience as Super Mario Bros. NES. The only thing this game has that makes it hard to call it mainline is the fact that it's a Game & Watch, and a lot of people say that Game & Watches shouldn't count. But like, you 
You can't say Game & Watches don't count. They're a really important part of the history of Nintendo. The game that established the fact that Mario has a brother named Luigi was a Game & Watch. Say, isn't it kind of weird how the Donkey Kong arcade games go Donkey Kong, then Donkey Kong Jr., then Donkey Kong 3? Like, why is only the third one numbered? Is Donkey Kong Jr. really Donkey Kong 2? But that's only because we're only looking at the arcade games, because there was a game released between Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong 3 that was called Donkey Kong 2. Okay, I'm not saying that Donkey Kong 3 is a sequel to the Game & Watch Donkey Kong 2. The Game & Watch The Donkey Kong 3 is a sequel to is Greenhouse, which is a completely different game. And it's not just Game & Watches, people ignore these LCD handhelds all the time. When Princess Peach Showtime came out, so many reviews talked about how the first game with Princess Peach as the main character was Super Princess Peach for the Nintendo DS, but like, it wasn't! Can someone please acknowledge the existence of Princess Toadstool's Castle Run? And I know, I get it. LCD handhelds have a bad reputation. A lot of people consider these games to be more like merchandise than actual video games. And I can definitely understand that viewpoint for something like the McDonald's Super Mario Bros. Watch. But the Game & Watch isn't really like that. Sure, the gameplay might feel too basic by modern standards, but so do Atari 2600 games and people seem to be fine calling those video games. In terms of the actual physical product, Game & Watches don't feel like cheap toys. They feel like thoughtfully designed retro Nintendo hardware. Because that's what they are. On the subject of the difference between Nintendo games and other games, remember this definition I was talking about earlier? I still haven't quite addressed all the points of ambiguity in here, and now is a good time to focus in on the part that says made by Nintendo. Some might reject to the suggestion I made a few moments ago that Princess Toadstool's Castle Run for the McDonald's Super Mario Bros. Watch counts as the first game with Princess Peach as the main character. I can think of plenty of reasons why someone might say that, but some of you might be thinking that Princess Toadstool's Castle Run doesn't count because this is a McDonald's product and not a Nintendo product. That's the wrong Mega Corporation. However, none of these three games, Castle Run, Super Princess Peach, and Showtime, none of these three games were actually made by Nintendo, or McDonald's for that matter. All three of these games use the likeness of copyrighted character Princess Peach Toadstool with the approval of the intellectual property holder. The Super Mario Bros. Watch games were manufactured by SIU and distributed by Simon Marketing. Princess Peach Showtime was published by Nintendo, but publishing a game isn't the same thing as making it. It was developed by Goodfeel, the same developers behind Kirby's Epic Yarn and Wario Land shake it. Super Princess Peach is the closest of these games to having been made by Nintendo, but it's still not quite. It was published by Nintendo and co-developed by Tosei Software and Nintendo SPD. Software Planning and Development. Nintendo SPD was a development studio that was under the Nintendo corporate umbrella, so it is accurate to say that Super Princess Peach was partially made by Nintendo, but not the whole thing. It was Nintendo SPD and Tosei. And my question is, does this matter? In a strictly literal sense, Nintendo does not make video games. Nintendo is a corporation that owns and houses multiple game development studios, and those development studios employ teams of artists who make video games. I'm using artist in the general sense there. Everyone involved in the art of creating a video game is an artist. So when someone says a game was made by Nintendo, what are they talking about? Who is Nintendo? I think the most reasonable sense in which to use this phrase is like, made by a team working for Nintendo directly or for a studio owned by Nintendo. So, you know, studios that are called Nintendo something, as well as studios like Retro, 1UP, and NEXT! But in practice, people seem to use made by Nintendo in a much broader sense than this. Pokemon is made by Nintendo. Kirby is made by Nintendo. Mario Golf is made by Nintendo. So if mainline Mario games have to have been made by Nintendo, what counts as made by Nintendo? Because if it's just made by a development team that works with Nintendo, that's every single development studio that's been officially given the Mario IP. Yes, even games like Hotel Mario or Mario Bros. Special and Punchball Mario Bros. The fact that these games are officially licensed means that the people who made them worked with Nintendo in some way. At which point I ask, does it even matter if it's official? Like, the Paper Mario web browser. Not browser game, web browser. This thing was officially licensed. Does the mere fact that this is a product that got Nintendo's official approval make it in any way closer to being a mainline Super Mario game than Super Mario Bros. Crossover? Fan games are interesting for this topic because I do genuinely believe that they could be relevant. There are other game series where some fan games are sometimes considered to be part of the series. Like, I don't think it would be that weird for someone to call Heaven Studio a mainline Rhythm Heaven game. The Super Mario Wiki's fellow Niwa member Smash Wiki gives the mod Project M4 
full coverage, so why not at least consider Super Mario fan games? The thing is, Nintendo is very protective of their intellectual property, with the brand image of Super Mario as one of their highest priorities. It is very rare for a Super Mario fan game to be allowed to exist in a state where it is accessible by the general public, and that creates a reluctance for fans to put too much effort into Super Mario fan games. Mods and ROM hacks for Super Mario games are pretty common, and there's certainly a fair share of parody games, but full-scale fan games don't tend to survive long enough to become notable. But there are still exceptions. The most notable fan game seems to be Super Mario 63, a Flash game that's a 2D platformer based on Super Mario 64 with many elements from other games. Almost as many people brought this game up as Speedster Comets from Part 1. So does the fact that this game is unofficial inherently disqualify it from being mainline? I don't know. Probably though. But what about Bootlegs. Is Seven Grand Dad a mainline Super Mario game? To me, the biggest difference between bootlegs and most fan games is that bootlegs are actually sold as products and aren't just distributed for free on the internet. And that's interesting, because there's a sense in which a game existing as a physical thing you could buy at some point makes it more of a quote-unquote real game than something a fan made as a passion project. But at the same time, there's also a sense in which a game being made by someone who, like, cared about making a game that's good makes it feel more legitimate than something made to trick parents into spending their money. And once you start looking at bootlegs and knockoffs, there's a whole other can of worms regarding games that are basically Mario games, but that, legally speaking, do not have Mario in them. You know, games like Secret Mario Chronicles, The Great Guiana Sisters, or Bros for the Atari 800. <laughs> Look at Bros! This is a Super Mario game. It wasn't made with Nintendo's involvement in any way, and this bro is legally not Mario, but Bros for the Atari 800 is a Super Mario game. So is it part of the series? Uh, no. Obviously not, for so many reasons, but of all the types of unofficial Mario games, it's games like Bros that are most in the clear legally, because they're not actually using Nintendo's intellectual property. And that very same fact is what makes it so clear that this isn't a Mario game. I mean, Mario games have to have Mario in them, don't they? Let's return to this definition one last time, and summarize all the main reasons it's potentially ambiguous. It's ambiguous what counts as a platformer. It's ambiguous what counts as a game. It's ambiguous what counts as made by Nintendo. It's ambiguous which title the word Super has to appear in, and it's ambiguous what counts as a reissue. This is defining one ambiguous thing, Super Mario series, with a chain of five ambiguous things. That's why it's possible for multiple people to agree that this definition describes how they view the Super Mario series while disagreeing which specific games are in that series. But you saw the name of this chapter and the way I segued into it from the last one. There's one more thing in this definition that hasn't been brought up yet. Now surely. Surely there could not possibly be more than one way to interpret the phrase Mario is a playable character. Some people might disagree with the idea that this is a requirement, for example Yoshi's Island and New Super Luigi U, but surely it's not a matter of personal opinion which games feature Mario as a playable character, right? But is Mario really not a playable character in Yoshi's Island? Sure, most of the buttons correspond to actions performed by this Yoshi and not the baby Mario on the Yoshi's back, but hey, sometimes you can pick up a superstar, and now you really are playing as Mario. And no, Mario is not playable in New Super Luigi U, but Luigi is. And Luigi is one of the Mario brothers. Some sources say that his full name is Luigi Mario. So there is a character named Mario who is playable in this game. So literally every single part of this definition is open to interpretation. If you really want to decide which games are part of the series objectively, a definition this concise cannot work. It needs at least six more sub-definitions before it can become useful. And at that point, the definition becomes about as long as it would have been to just make a list of what games you want to include as part of the series. It's fine as a description of how someone conceptualizes the series, but to use it as a way of determining if any specific game is or is not a Super Mario game according to the person who wrote the definition just straight up doesn't work. And yes, all of these ambiguous points really are relevant. Let's look at some of the other most notably ambiguous games, just to drive it home. Bowser's Fury doesn't have Super in the title, but Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury does, and it may or may not count as a reissue of Super Mario 3D World. Super Mario Run may or may not be a platformer, and it may or may not be a game. Super Paper Mario may or may not be a platformer, and it may or may not count as having been made by Nintendo. And just for fun, Mario Pinball Land. 
Yes, the pinball game for the Game Boy Advance. There is a way you can interpret this definition where it satisfies it. Calling this game a platformer is weird, but it is a game built around navigation-based challenges that require the mastery of a specific set of character movement mechanics. It has enough of the genre conventions of a platformer that you could get away with describing it as one. This game was developed by Fuse Games, a British development studio that has since rebranded to Silverball, but it was published by Nintendo, and Nintendo publishing a game apparently can count as made by Nintendo. Now, you don't control this Mario orb directly, you control the pinball paddles, but that can be described as you playing as Mario, just in a really indirect way. And no, the title Mario Pinball Land does not contain the word Super, but this game was developed in the UK, and in Europe, this game is called Super Mario Ball. So theoretically, someone who considers Mario Pinball Land to be a mainline Super Mario game could see this definition and agree with it. Now obviously that's a really contrived example, and besides, it's not like when people disagree on what games are in this series, it's always because they have a shared vague understanding and the disagreement is actually over the interpretation of the component parts. Like, I don't think most people who consider New Super Luigi U to be mainline would say it's mainline because playing as Luigi counts as playing as Mario. They just don't consider playing as Mario to be a requirement. And I think that's fair. Mario games have a pretty big cast of characters, so why not count Donkey Kong Country 2 or Wario Land 4 or Yoshi's New Island as part of the mainline series? On Strategy Wiki, there's this feature where if you're looking at the guide for a game that's part of a longer series, there's these links to the pages covering the preceding and following entries. Using this as the strategy wiki's model for the Super Mario series, we can see that, like, most of the games in this series don't have Mario as a playable character. This wiki considers Yoshi's Island to be the direct sequel to Super Mario World, so the entire Yoshi's Island series, including some games that the Super Mario wiki doesn't consider mainline Yoshi's Island games like Yoshi's Story and Woolly World, I'll add, is technically included as part of the mainline Super Mario series here. And going the other way, strategy Wiki also says that the game preceding Super Mario Bros. is the arcade game Mario Bros., which in turn is preceded by the arcade Donkey Kong games. And like, in Donkey Kong Jr., you play as Donkey Kong Jr. In Donkey Kong 3, you play as Stanley from Greenhouse. Excluding weird technicalities, that's 10 out of 17 games on this list where Mario is not a playable character. Now, some of you might object to that exact count. There are some who will say that Donkey Kong does not count as a game where Mario is a playable character, because you don't play as Mario in that game, you play as Jumpman. Quite a few survey participants participants brought up that exact thing to explain their reasoning for why they don't think Donkey Kong is part of the series. Now, if you don't mind, I would like to go on a bit of a tangent about the specific claim that in the arcade game Donkey Kong, you play as Jumpman and not Mario. So this isn't technically true. Like, the player character in the arcade game Donkey Kong is named Mario. He wasn't named Mario when this game came out, but he is named Mario now, so it's inaccurate to say this character isn't Mario. He straightforwardly is. And the name Mario was given to this character very shortly after this game was released. Here's a promotional flyer from 1981, the same year this game came out, that calls him Little Mario. And since this character isn't referred to by any name in the game itself, paratextual material like this is literally all the information we have for what this guy's name is. Oh, I should explain, paratext in media analysis refers to material that's associated with but not part of the work itself, like advertisements, an official website, the blurb on the back of the box, or the enclosed instruction book. This is contrasted with text, which is the work itself. The use of the word text in media analysis is different from the thing the word normally means, so for a video game, the text can include things like graphics and gameplay mechanics and not just words that appear on screen as literal text. I mean, that is still text, but everything else on screen counts as text too. So like, it is text that mushrooms can be found in these blocks, and it is paratext that this game takes place in the Mushroom Kingdom. In older games like this, it's common for a lot of important story details to be left unstated in the text, so you have to turn to the paratext to get the full picture. But it's important to remember, you can't analyze paratext the same way you analyze text without jumping on it first to remove the wings. Anyway, when Donkey Kong was originally released, there was some paratext that referred to this character as Jumpman, but he's referred to as Mario considerably more often. There's the Saturday Super Kid cartoon. Mario, come back! Donkey Kong's getting away! The Donkey Kong Goes Home album. You kids are too young to remember, but Gainesville once had a sitting zoo across from my candy shop and my friend Mario's pizza parlor. Donkey Kong cereal. Mario, save me! And even a whole franchise of video games that calls this guy Mario. Yes, he was called Jumpman, but his name is Mario. That's just what his name is. And Jumpman isn't even like a name, it's a description of what he is. He is a man who jumps. 
he is a Jumpman. But okay, when people say that's Jumpman, not Mario, in the context of classifying different Mario games, what they usually mean is that they're drawing a distinction between the version of the character that existed in Donkey Kong and the modern version of the character. What people mean by this is this isn't Mario yet. A lot of important aspects of the character hadn't been decided yet when this game was released, so this isn't really Mario. I strongly disagree with this mentality. The effect that doing this has is it's separating out the early history of the character and disregarding it as irrelevant. But I don't think it's irrelevant. Donkey Kong is an extremely important part of the history of Mario, both the character and the media franchise. Yes, it's very different from things that came after it, but like, that's what happens when something goes on for as long as Mario has. Things change over time, you can't just look at the origin point and say it doesn't count because it's too different. That just feels like bad analysis to me. Don't get me wrong, there are plenty of other reasons to say Donkey Kong isn't part of the mainline series, but the fact that there was a window of a couple months when this character was referred to as Jumpman before being given the name Mario is a pretty bad reason to say this doesn't count as a Mario game. However, there is a subset of the people who make this distinction between Mario from Donkey Kong and the modern Mario who mean something much more specific when they say Jumpman is not Mario. What they mean is that in fiction, the player character in the arcade game Donkey Kong is not the same person as Mario from the Super Mario series. This is a somewhat common fan theory popularized by MatPat, and it is so annoying, and it doesn't make literally any sense, and it doesn't even imply anything interesting about the games. Like, why? Okay, I should actually explain the fan theory so people know what I'm talking about here. This is still media analysis, so like, I'm not going to tell you that this fan theory is wrong, it's just that I really don't like it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'll do my best to present the strongest version of the argument in favor of this fan theory that I can, and then I'll provide my counter-argument and alternate analyses. And then, just like everything else in this video, I want you to decide for yourself which analysis makes the most sense to you. So then, here goes. In the Donkey Kong Country series, there's this character named Cranky Kong, Donkey Kong's grandfather, and Cranky is stated to be the original Donkey Kong, from the arcade game Donkey Kong. So the Donkey Kong from Donkey Kong Country, who also appears in various other Mario games, is not the Donkey Kong from Donkey Kong. Let's call this Donkey Kong Donkey Kong the Third. So there's Cranky Kong, then Donkey Kong Jr., then Donkey Kong the Third. Three whole generations of Donkey Kong. Now, there's this other game called Yoshi's Island DS, which establishes that Baby Mario and Baby DK are the same age, because they're newborn babies at the same time. But wait! In the game Donkey Kong Jr., Mario is shown to be a grown adult at the same time that Donkey Kong Jr. is still visibly very young. But Donkey Kong Jr. is the father of Donkey Kong III, and we already know that Mario and Donkey Kong III are the same age. How can Mario be the same age as Donkey Kong III and older than Donkey Kong Jr.? That's a clear contradiction. The timeline simply doesn't add up. However, if this isn't Mario, then the contradiction is resolved. And that's the whole theory. Now, at this point, some gamers in the comments might be saying, Hey, young Misily? Oh, you're back. What's up? Hey, I just got back from playing I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater, and I made it just in time to listen to your whole explanation of this fan theory. You did a pretty good job summarizing the key points, but I think you skipped some important pieces of evidence. Yeah, that was intentional. There's a lot of things people say when talking about this fan theory that really don't help the argument, and that fall apart if you think about them critically for literally any amount of time. <laughs> I don't know, though. Like, don't you think it's weird that in Donkey Kong, Mario has some sort of romance with Pauline, but later in life when he's seeing someone else, he still maintains his friendship with her? Uh, no. I don't think that's weird. Do you think that's weird? <laughs> um, well, what about the timeline stuff? I went over the timeline stuff. No, I mean the real timeline stuff. Like, how can Mario possibly remain so athletic when he's been doing these adventures for long enough for Cranky Kong to start looking like this? Probably because Mario is a cartoon character? You don't need to speculate on how much time is passing between games to demonstrate the contradiction. That doesn't really add anything. Well, you didn't even establish basic differences between the characters. Isn't that important? Like, Jumpman is a carpenter and Mario is a plumber. Sure, but Mario is also a doctor, a boxing referee, and an Olympic athlete. This man wears a lot of hats. Okay, but what about the arcade machine that says Jumpman on it in the Super Mario Bros. movie? Yeah. What about it? Doesn't that prove it? I guess it demonstrates that a video game called Jumpman exists in this movie, but that's not really relevant to this fan theory in any way, so I don't know why someone would bring it up in this context. No, I don't mean the arcade machine itself. I mean the character playing this arcade machine called Jumpman. That's him! That's Jumpman! What? What possible reason could you have to come to that conclusion? Because it says Jumpman on screen, right there! Yeah, that's the game he's playing. Is your name I am a teacher Super Mario sweater? It doesn't he look kind of like Jumpman? I mean, yeah, kinda, but it's clearly not the same exact design. He's supposed to look 
kind of like Mario, because the whole joke of this scene is that this random guy has Mario's voice from the games. Too much, it's a perfect! Wahoo! So, little things like that notwithstanding, that's the fan theory. The core argument is that saying these are two different characters resolves what would otherwise be a contradiction in the timeline. So that's the main evidence for Mario and Jumpman not being the same person, then what's the evidence that they are the same person? I will now list some things that these two characters have in common. And to start, I'll stick entirely to information that's either shown or stated directly in the games, so I'm ignoring paratext for now. First of all, they look very similar. Sure, if you use Mario's 2020s design and put it against the sprite from Donkey Kong, there's some obvious differences, but it's more reasonable to compare the design in the arcade game Mario Bros which, like, come on. Another easy one? They're both named Mario. Yes, Mario from Donkey Kong is referred to by that name in paratext, but the name is used in-game too, just not in Donkey Kong itself. Like, look, here in Donkey Kong Jr., there's the name Mario. That's unambiguous, this guy is named Mario. We also have Mario Hoops 3-on-3 three three using the Jumpman as Mario's baller name, so we know Mario at least sometimes goes by the Jumpman, but we don't have any in-game evidence of Jumpman being called Jumpman, so that doesn't really count. Let's see, they both use hammers as weapons, they're both good at jumping but can hurt themselves if they fall from too high. Oh, here's a big one. So this is a little open to interpretation, but in Super Mario Odyssey there's this interaction where Mayor Pauline says she knew Mario would remember that she was captured by an ape a long time ago. Now, if this is referring to the events of Donkey Kong, a game from a long time ago where Pauline is captured by an ape, then it would be weird for Pauline to say she knows Mario would remember this if it happened before he was even born. However, this still theoretically could be referring to something else. I mean, there is a whole musical number in this part of the game with level design that says, hey, remember the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong? But still, in the same way the name Mario doesn't appear anywhere in the game Donkey Kong, the name Pauline doesn't appear anywhere in game either. Like, it is stated in paratext that this character's name is Pauline, but textually she doesn't have a name, so the lady from Donkey Kong and Mayor Pauline from Super Mario Odyssey could be different people. Let's see, anything else I'm missing? Ah, oh, that's right, yes, one more thing we know that Jumpman and Mario have in common, purely from in-game information, is that they both appear in the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong. Snake, you know who that is? You're kidding, right? It's Mario. Mario made his first appearance in 1981. Like... It's just been stated directly, multiple times. Who's done me a thousand wrongs ever since Donkey Kong? This is a fact about the character Mario that gets brought up occasionally. It's not subtle, it's not ambiguous, it's just been directly confirmed that Mario from the Super Mario series was in the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong. This is a fact that we know for certain about the character. And that's just textual information from the games. Once we start looking at stuff from outside of the games, there's even more. First of all, Pauline is definitely the lady from Donkey Kong. Ooh, check out this coloring book from 1983 that depicts her as a singer over 30 years before Mario Odyssey. We know from the Donkey Kong Country novelizations that the person Cranky Kong remembers battling during the events of the arcade game Donkey Kong was a plumber named Mario. And we know from advertisements that Mario from Donkey Kong has a brother named Luigi, and that collectively they are known as the Mario Brothers. Mario, where are you? It's Atari Mario Brothers with Mario from Donkey Kong, his brother Luigi, and lots of crazy creatures. Now, do these pieces of evidence taken together necessarily prove that Mario and Jumpman are the same person? Yes, but it doesn't address the actual reasons people make the claim. So a fan of this theory would almost certainly dismiss most or all of these points as unimportant or not canon. But look at the alleged evidence that these are different characters. This contradiction isn't evidence that Mario couldn't have been in the game Donkey Kong, it's evidence that a timeline doesn't work. Yes, Mario and Jumpman being different characters would resolve this contradiction, but the contradiction itself doesn't imply that they're different characters. There are other alternative ways that you could resolve the contradiction, and I'm just going to list some of them now. And again, I want you to decide for yourself which of these explanations makes the most sense to you. Maybe you'll come to a completely different analysis that I didn't even think of. That's fine too. Alternate explanation number one. Baby Mario is not Mario. The contradiction suggests it's not possible for Baby Mario and Jumpman to be the same person, but that has nothing to do with Mario. If Baby Mario from Yoshi's Island is secretly not the same person as Mario, that would explain the contradiction exactly as well as the original fan theory. Yes, this does require ignoring all the in-game and paratextual evidence that directly states that these are the same person, and yes, it has the result of cutting out a significant portion of Mario's history just because it makes the timeline too weird, but the popular fan theory already does those things, so clearly that doesn't matter. Alternate explanation number two. 
Cranky Kong is not the original Donkey Kong. How exactly do we know that when Cranky Kong reminisces about the good old days, he's talking about the events of the 1981 arcade game Donkey Kong? Maybe he's talking about a similar but unrelated thing that happened to him separately. Yes, this requires ignoring some stuff, but the type of evidence we have that Cranky Kong was the original Donkey Kong is pretty much exactly the same as the type of evidence we have that Mario was in the original Donkey Kong. Alternate explanation number three. Donkey Kong Jr. is not Donkey Kong III's father. Yes, it has been stated that Cranky Kong is Donkey Kong III's grandfather, but it's also been stated that Cranky Kong is Donkey Kong III's father. The games themselves are not consistent about this, so it's open to interpretation which of these two things we want to believe. If we simply decide that the thing that's canon is that Cranky Kong is Donkey Kong III's father, then that would mean Donkey Kong III is actually Donkey Kong Jr.'s older brother, and the contradiction disappears. Of course, this means you need to ignore all the times it's been stated that Cranky Kong is specifically Donkey Kong III's grandfather, but the games themselves already do that, so it's fine. Alternate explanation number four, time travel. Did you know that the game Yoshi's Island DS has time travel in it? Gee, I wonder why this game that has time travel in it is hard to place on a linear timeline. Seems like a real conundrum. Alternate explanation number five, Baby DK is not Donkey Kong III. At the time of writing, Baby DK has appeared in exactly two games. Yoshi's Island DS, and Mario Super Sluggers. And it is not stated literally anywhere in either of these games which character with the initials DK, Baby DK, is the baby version of. Like, who the heck is this? There is a trading card that calls this character Baby Donkey Kong, so at least we know what the DK stands for, but there are multiple characters named Donkey Kong. That's what started this mess in the first place. If Baby DK is actually the baby version of Cranky Kong, that completely explains the apparent contradiction. Sure, you can look at the character design and infer that Baby DK is meant to be the same character as Donkey Kong III, but the whole conceit of that fan theory relies on the assumption that that doesn't count as evidence. Alternate explanation number six. The contradiction doesn't matter. Okay, so let's say you've noticed something that suggests that Yoshi's Island DS is not compliant with lore that was established in the Donkey Kong Country series. Cool. Why would you expect it to, though? And why would that imply anything about other Mario games? Neither of these games, Donkey Kong Country and Yoshi's Island DS, neither of them were made by Nintendo. These are different games in different series and different franchises made by different third-party developers in different continents. It's like expecting the 2023 movie to adhere to the lore established in the 1986 anime, noticing a way in which it doesn't, then contort your interpretation of the source material both things are based on until you've resolved the contradiction. And saying Mario and Jumpman are different characters doesn't even imply anything interesting regardless. Like, if this were true, what would it mean? Okay, that's not the real Mario, but Donkey Kong for the Game Boy has the real Mario reenact literally the exact same plot as the original game, so this doesn't even imply that Mario didn't do the things that Jumpman did. I guess it would imply that the beef Cranky Kong has with Mario isn't what we thought it was, but also it's fun that Cranky Kong has beef with famous video game character Mario, so I don't know why you would want to get rid of that. Now hopefully we're already able to figure this out from the rest of this video, but in general I do really like it when people have fun analyzing these games in weird ways. The fact that the the Mario isn't Jumpman fan theory exists is not a bad thing. The problem is that most of the time when people say this, they're not having fun analyzing these games in a weird way. They didn't come to this conclusion independently, they're saying this because they heard someone else say it, and that someone else is usually MatPat. And I don't know, I would prefer if more people were having fun with it. Explore the space of possibilities and decide on the analysis that you like the most. Ah, see, this tangent does tie back into the thesis of the video. It's not just pointless ranting about an old game theory video after all. Anyway, I do think the question of what it even means for something to be canon in the Mario franchise is worth exploring more seriously, because the Mario games really aren't narrative focused, like, at all. Sure, some individual games present compelling stories, and occasionally those stories make references to previous games as though they were events that happened in the past, but like, that's not the same thing as there actually being an overarching narrative. Mario games are almost always self-contained works that use the cast of established characters as archetypes. What does it mean to ask if the events of any specific game really happened? Here's a fun question. Does it matter if Super Mario Bros. 3 is a stage play? You might have heard this one before. Mario 3 is framed like it's a play, with platforms suspended from the ceiling on wires and casting shadows on the background. The game even begins with curtains rising and Mario ends a level by exiting stage right. So does this mean the events of Super Mario Bros. 3 didn't really happen? To which I would say, yes. 
none of the Mario games really happened. They're video games. But that's not what the question means, is it? From the perspective of the characters, is the plot of Super Mario Bros. 3 a real event? You know, is it canon? And so I ask, does that even matter? Is it relevant to the analysis of these games? And very importantly, is it relevant to the classification of these games? If there were some sort of overarching story, this question of is this game canon could be used as a way to make a different type of list of mainline games. As in, if you want to get the full story of the Mario Brothers and their wacky adventures, these these are the games you need to play to get the whole picture. But like, there isn't an overarching story, so this doesn't really work. And yet, I have seen people talk about this as though it's something that you can do. Like, I've seen people give definitions of the form, the mainline games are all the games that are part of the Mario timeline. But there isn't a Mario timeline, so what does this even mean? The closest thing to an official Mario timeline is the manga adaptations. But one, there's multiple manga adaptations and they do different things, and two, Super Mario Kun doesn't even place all the games it's adapting on a timeline. Story arcs based on different games often run concurrently, and it's not always made clear what relative order they're supposed to take place in. So any timeline of canon events is going to be fan-made, which means it's just as open to interpretation as everything else I've been talking about. Everything from Versus Wrecking Crew to Donkey Konga 2 to Luigi's Mansion 3 is equally fair game to be included on a timeline. And frankly, there shouldn't be an official Mario timeline. Like, one of the main criticisms you can make about modern Mario games is just how rare it is for them to experiment with truly new ideas for the story your characters. And can you imagine how much worse that would get if there was a canon timeline that new games were expected to adhere to? The last thing Mario games need is more rules for what they're allowed to do with their stories. Making a timeline can still be a fun exercise, but using what games can be placed on the timeline as a metric for deciding which games are part of the mainline series really doesn't work. Most Mario games are so story light that you can place them just about anywhere you want on your timeline. It's not which games can be placed on the timeline, it's which games does the person making the timeline care enough about to include. Sure, some games are really different, and they're harder to place in the context of other games like Mario's Bombs Away or Mario's Early Years Preschool Fun, but if you make enough fanfiction, you can justify connecting these games together however you want. Now, there is one more angle I'd like to approach the classification of these games from before wrapping this up which is, uh... Oh, wait, what do I call this chapter? Sorry, I didn't expect this video to go on for this long, so I assumed that I would be able to name these chapters the way I've been doing it without needing to take a stance on if I consider New Super Luigi U to be mainline or not. Ooh, and I guess Bowser's Fury too, huh? Okay, um, I guess I'll skip them? Entirely because I don't know what portion of New Chapter U I should replace with Luigi. Yeah, that works. Sorry, as I was saying, there's one final perspective I would like to consider. I would like to ask one more time, what does mainline even mean? Doesn't the term mainline sort of give the impression that there's some sort of continuous thread connecting each installment to the one that came before it? And if there isn't an overarching story that the series as a whole is trying to tell, what could that thread be? And I think, for Super Mario games, it's reasonable to say that there isn't one. I mean, there isn't one. As in, there isn't one main line of games. And I'm not talking about splitting the series into multiple separate series or subseries. I've already covered that idea extensively in part one. I'm talking about something a little more nuanced than that. Let's talk about Wario Land Super Mario Land 3. Is this game part of the Super Mario series, or is it part of the Wario Land series? If we say that Wario Land 1 is truly a Super Mario Land game, and we classify Super Mario Land as a subseries of the Super Mario series, then that means classifying Wario Land as a Super Mario game, which doesn't really feel right. So here's the idea. Maybe two series can coexist and have overlap without one being a subseries or spin-off of the other series. In this model, Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 is both the first game in the Wario Land series and the third game in the Super Mario Land series. But, and this is the important part, the Super Mario Land series is neither fully separate from nor contained within the Super Mario series. That is a very subtle idea that allows for so many possibilities. Games can simultaneously be in the same series and in different series. All you need is some basic Super Mario set theory. We can say that Yoshi's Island is a sequel to Super Mario World, that Captain Toad is a sequel to 3D World, or that Super Mario Bros. Special is a sequel to Mario 1, all while at the same time saying that they're not part of the mainline series. However, there is a problem with Super Mario set theory theory as a way of classifying games. Even though I do think this is a good way to capture some of the nuance of the weirdest edge cases, for practical purposes it has its limitations. So let's say that we're conceptualizing the Super Mario series as a sprawling, non-linear network of overlapping sets of games. So uh, what do you do with that? 
Like, in what context would you want to have a list of mainline games where it is even possible for that list to be in the form of a sprawling non-linear network of overlapping sets? This level of nuance can be appropriate when discussing any specific game in isolation, or if you're talking about the whole series as a collective unit, but if you specifically need a list of games, that list needs an order that it goes in, just for practical purposes. And if you flatten this into a list that has a linear order, that completely negates all the advantages gained from conceptualizing it in this way. It turns it into something that might as well be a set of mutually exclusive series, which themselves are divided into mutually exclusive subseries. But I still think this idea has merit. It's just hard to put into practice a lot of the time, and it doesn't help that much for the specific purpose of determining which specific games belong to the set of mainline Super Mario games. So, what have we learned? Super Mario is a colossal and highly successful multimedia franchise, and there may or may not be a series of video games that's also called Super Mario which exists at the core of this franchise, but if such a series does exist, there is no consensus regarding which specific games that series consists of. There are at least 19 games that most fans would say are part of the series, but that doesn't mean those 19 games are the series. Almost everyone disagrees with that list of games in some way. This lack of consensus among fans is reflective of how official sources also don't classify the games in a consistent way. Simply looking at the way the games are titled isn't very helpful either, because a lot of games are titled in ways that aren't indicative of what they actually are. There have been many attempts to come up with a way of classifying these games objectively, but in my opinion this is a fundamentally misguided approach. Some of these objective definitions accidentally include games like I Am A Teacher Super Mario Sweater, but even a more robust definition can run into problems of its own. Most of the key aspects that are used to define what makes something a mainline Super Mario game are themselves just as or even more vague and open to interpretation as the Super Mario series itself. It's ambiguous what what counts as a platformer, what counts as the same thing as a previously released game, what counts as something being made by Nintendo, what counts as Mario being a playable character, and even what counts as a game in the first place. While it is possible to account for all of these factors, there are so many edge cases involved that doing so would result in a definition longer than the list of games it includes, at which point you would have been better off just listing what games you consider mainline without a whole definition. So how many Super Mario games are there? Well, I don't know, and there are several reasons why I don't know. Primarily, I don't know when you're watching this, and even if I did, I can't predict the future. I know a lot of people interpreted that thing I said at the end of part one as me successfully predicting Super Mario Bros. Wonder, but like, the thing I said was that there's going to be another Super Mario game, and either it will be ambiguous, or it won't be ambiguous. And I was right, one of those two things did happen. But also, I'm undecided. There are some games where I haven't made up my mind regarding if I consider the mainline or not. Mostly New Super Luigi U, Bowser's Fury, and I'm also kind of on the fence about Super Mario Bros. Special. However, I'm fine with being undecided. My personal list of games isn't the correct answer to the question. Your list of games is the correct answer. My goal for these two videos has been to present the range of options available to you so that you can decide for yourself how you want to classify these games. I've been Jan Misely, and if there's something that I didn't mention in this video, it's not because I forgot to bring it up, it's because I didn't have anything interesting to say about it. You can probably reconstruct by yourself what I would have said about it if I had mentioned it. I believe in you.